Hey folks, we're on the air again. This is another episode of Address This Mess. We've got a great couple guests here today. We've got uh, Chris Gaskin back again. The three times I don't know why I gave the thumbs up like a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. You're like yeah. a fighter pilot. Yeah. You're like, I'm going in. <laughs> this audio pod. Like, luckily there's video, but for anyone listening on audio, I literally gave the thumbs up like a fucking moron. For anyone listening to, on audio, I'm trying he- to tweet. He thumbs up and then he put his shades down, <laughs> <laughs> like like deal with it, and then uh, he then rode off on a Kawasaki Ninja. <laughs> Did a joke in sign language. <laughs> and uh, we've well, got Highway to the Danger Zone was playing. Yep, there we go. The very funny Ivan Decker here. Hello, really excited to have you on the show, Ivan. I'm also Absolute giving a thumbs up. Animal. <laughs> and uh, we got Mike Stang as the always. regular old crew, and this guy. Um, we're going to do our sponsors here, get them out of the way. Um, audible.com, um, digital audio books are great. 150,000 titles. You know, if you don't like reading like me, you can have it read to you just like when you were a kid. That's great. From your librarian. And, uh, what the fuck? Oh yeah, it's, uh, audibletrial.com forward slash ATM. Might be a backslash. Try them both. And, uh, <laughs> it's probably a forward slash if it's in a URL. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, Jesus, keep it down. Do you just got to whine the whole time? Put them in the room. Yeah. Um, this is off to a horrible start. I don't know where I'm going with this. I think, I think we're doing great. Audible.com, everybody. It's Audible.com fantastic. Audible.com is a child. Oh, yeah, you of... get one free book. You get a free book in a free month if you go through audibletrial.com forward slash ATM. Yeah. Go to addressthismess.com, click on the link. There'll be another link there. It's Amazon. Audible's born of Amazon. Amazon's a gigantic superstore. It's like Walmart online. If you want to buy anything, you can probably find it on Amazon for cheap. So if you want to, just go to addressthismess.com. It's a little bit of a... I got shoes on on Amazon this year. You got shoes on Amazon? Yeah, they fit perfectly. It was great. They were six hundred dollars <laughs> shoes for two hundred bucks. It's a dead honest endorsement. You hear that, gentlemen? That's four hundred dollars savings. Yeah. Huge. Savings. Even I'm gonna have to question them when that happens. <laughs> six hundred dollars shoes, sir. What? What are they? They're Cole Hans. Oh, they're lawyer shoes. <laughs> they're like the kind of shoes lawyers you wear. Get them on Amazon. Go to justicemess.com. They do corporate gigs. They gotta look like I yeah. make a like I like I deserve the money that they're paying me. <laughs> you can't show up to a gig that's paying you more than uh, fifteen hundred bucks and be wearing like a hoodie. Like, nah, I spend it all on drugs every year. <laughs> yeah. Gaskin, you want to tell us about On It? <laughs> yeah, you uh, I do. I want to tell you guys about On It. You got a little right up here. Do what's, you guys? What's on it? You guys work out? Yep. Always. Sparingly. All right. Three of you work out. I don't work out, but if I worked out, I would use Shroom Tech from On It. it helps with muscle mass. Also, they have. Uh, a bunch of workout stuff, battle ropes. They have uh, those uh, big ball weight things that you swing around that Brody Stevens wrecked his back on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Alpha Brain. I just ordered, Alpha Brain. just ordered a fresh batch of Alpha Brain. Should be here yeah. this week. And, and if you're a dummy like me and can't get through advertisements, take Alpha Brain, which I should have taken before this, but I didn't. So uh, go to onget.com and type in the code word. Uh, R- Rogan. That's what okay. we, said. we just tell people to put in Rogan because it gives them ten percent off. <laughs> All right, perfect. We we don't have our own. I'm doing it. Okay. Our other sponsor that uh, that we'd like to thank is uh, the Dollar Shave Club. Uh, <laughs> I am a, a a customer of the Dollar Shave Club. It's pretty fantastic. They send you a, a razor blade. Quality and, uh, razor blade. Quality razor. Uh, you can choose. Uh, when they first started, it was like just a basic razor, but now if you're a fancy person, uh, you can do like. The six blade razor, you know, in case you want to throw away more things at the end of the month. I don't know why you don't just get the get the two blade razor. It's perfect. It works fine. Um, <clears throat> they have a great commercial and their campaign is fantastic. It's also much cheaper than buying Gillette razor blades. Also, you don't have to feel like a shoplifter every time you lift up that stupid little flap. <laughs> that is <laughs> razor blades on an <laughs> aisle. <laughs> no, I'm just buying them. <laughs> It's like seven people running over, be like, it's up, let's make a break for it now. And then they grab razor blades, and you're like, it wasn't me, I just wanted one. I'm going to buy it. And they're like, help us catch those guys. I'm like, ah, Dollar Shave Club. I'm going to sign up for that. Can't take this shit. So if you're tired of that, every time you go to Shoppers, Dollar Shave Club is your place to be. Just cracks me up, this guy. 
It really strikes a funny ball. What do you do for work? Uh, I am a comedian. That makes sense. <laughs> I do stand-up comedy. Um, I also uh, write occasionally. Um, what? Uh, yeah, that was just a joke. A shitty one, obviously. <laughs> um, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, ten years. I'm on my tenth year now. Uh, I started when I was 19 years old. As soon as I could get into bars, uh, I started doing stand-up and kind of never stopped. The reason why I started, Perfect. is that your next question? Yeah, you, you fucking <laughs> need to look at this guy. This guy's done the 60 minutes. Yeah, he's done this yeah. before. <laughs> I've had a few interviews. Uh, was I the class clown? Yes, of course. <laughs> um, how do you deal with hecklers? Well, I throw lava at them. I bring lava to every show. And when someone heckles, I throw lava right at their face. Do you hear the name John Mulaney a lot? <laughs> uh, I have heard the name John Mulaney a lot uh, recently since he's been blowing up. Uh, and when I first started as well, people were like, you remind me a lot of John Mulaney. Um, but uh, the reason why I started comedy was uh, I didn't even remember this. This is actually the first instance of me telling this story uh, officially on record. Oh, like sweet. Most of the time... You heard it here first, folks. Address this, man. Most of the time when I tell the story of how I started comedy, I didn't. I never really remembered. I was like, I always loved stand-up. I never thought I could do it. And then I, I watched some stand-up specials, and then I decided to, to start writing. But I didn't realize that, like... Uh, the like, there's an actual tangible moment when I decided that I was gonna do stand up, and that was when I was in acting class in grade twelve, and uh, we had to do monologues, which is like for those of you that the are works. not actors, they're the works. Yeah, it's bad. Basically, you are assigned a monologue. So you got to pick a monologue from the movie. I wanted to do this "Say Goodbye to the Say Goodnight to the Bad Guy" speech from Scarface, but it had too many swears in it, so my teacher wouldn't let me do it. Uh, <laughs> see, my acting teacher would have let me do it. Yeah, see, there you go. So uh, basically, you just have to pick a monologue and you do it. And this one kid in my uh, in my class uh, decided to do a Carlin routine. He just asked the teachers, like, can I do a George Carlin act? And I don't know why I'd never considered stand-up to be a monologue. Otherwise, I would have done that. But mm -hmm. he did it. Uh, and there was also a girl in the class that I had this, like, huge crush on. And I remember very vividly... Always a girl. I remember very vividly watching him do this monologue, and she was, like, dying, like, mm -hmm. killing herself laughing. And I'm like, all right, this is what I gotta do. I gotta do this stand-up comedy thing to get all of the ladies, not realizing that the reason why she was laughing and so enthralled by him was that he was like a hunky, he was already like a hunky jock dude. So that was like, he could have done anything and she would have been like, yay, he's the best. <laughs> but for me, uh, at the time I was like, oh, it's cause he's funny, that's why. I'll do that, that'll be great. Isn't it sad how that, there there are some guys, uh, and there, there are some very, uh, objectively good-looking guys in Vancouver who are also very funny. Where are you going with this? But there guy? are, <laughs> there are from time to time guys who come and they're they're very good-looking and immediately like all of the girls are just laughing. Yeah. And oh you're yeah. And like, he's not even when they're not even funny. He's not funny. And they're like, yes, he is. And it's like, no, he's not. Because they get just... that like giddy uh, yeah. schoolgirl type thing where it's like, oh my god, he's so funny because they can't. <laughs> But that, it's like when you watch, uh, there's a good example of this is when you watch Dane Cook's Vicious Circle video. Ugh. You hear, uh, the, the reaction of the crowd is unlike that of any other stand-up video or stand-up special because it's never, the crowd's never quiet. It's like, it was, it was, it sounds like just Leonardo DiCaprio's on stage and there's a bunch of teenage girls in the crowd. Cause like throughout the whole <laughs> thing, like during setups, women are just yelling like, oh my God. Dane's the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Show yeah. us your tits or whatever. <laughs> Girls yell. I don't know. I've never had that happen to me, so I wouldn't know. But it's like there's no quiet. There's no like nobody's even respecting no. the art. They're not respecting the setup, the punchline. They're just there because they're like, he's a hot guy and he's the center of attention. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He's super theatrical too. Yeah. That, yeah, he just wheels around on stage. Yeah, Vicious Circle is easily my least favorite of his specials. Yeah, and, I mean, I'm not saying he's not a he's, talented comic. He, no, he's, he's got a few, like uh, Isolated Incident, I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great special. And the fact that he filmed it in the Laugh Factory, Yeah, and it's just one solid take, like yeah. that I love even more. That's actually my favorite way to shoot a stand-up special, is one take. The ones that they yeah. cut to the audience to edit... Oh. 
Ah. What uh, they they'll do? You'll take chunks from like different. They'll do three or four shows, yeah. and then they'll edit that. They'll stitch that together, and then the uh, the only place to edit, the only edit point, is on the laughs. So they'll edit during a laugh, but they can't just edit because there's a static camera of the stage, and they can't edit because like the mic stand will jump around or right. like the person will move. Yeah. So they always cut to the audience, then cut back. Oh, that's why they you always see it. Yeah. And that, that cut to the right. audience, like, I wish they had anything else to cut to. Chelsea Pretty did a great job of it in her last that was special hilarious, by just hey? cutting to random shit, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah, making uh, a joke about the, the production of it. Yeah, because, yeah. like, it is so ridiculous to cut to the crowd. Like, I don't care, but, like, wh- who's that guy? I don't <laughs> yeah. give a shit. Amy, Amy Schumer's uh, is it, uh, all sex stuff. No, that's not right. Her, her, not her most recent one, but, the like, the first Comedy Central one that she did. It like the first ten minutes, there was like no crowd cuts. Yeah. And then after that, it was like crowd cut after crowd cut after crowd cut, and it's like, what the fuck happened? Like, did yeah, shit just go off the rails. Like three of the four shows. Yeah. And I think she's hilarious. Mm-hmm. She's so fucking funny. But it, it's weird when you just see so many crowd cuts. That's why the HBO Live specials were my favorites. Like, yeah, the live on Broadway is like. Uh, Robin Williams did one, Seinfeld did one, and those were both like recorded and broadcast live at the same time. And then later, well, Carlin put out was on the TV. first one to do that. Yeah, Carlin as well. In 92. And they, like, it's such a great format. I don't know why they stopped. I guess because uh, there was no commercial breaks. This is back when HBO was like full on, like, you paid and you watched the whole thing. Well, that's how HBO still is. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. I watch but, but it's, <laughs> it's I don't watch TV. TV. I don't watch HBO. TV legally. But it, it costs... <laughs> yeah, man, I was supposed to get cable hooked up this morning. I called it canceled. It, <laughs> it, it costs it so much. Date. I just think that it's hilarious that the internet is the same thing that sells you TV. Like, when Shaw or Telus, they're like, yeah. they're like, hey, you have really fast internet. Do you want TV, too? I'm like, no. <laughs> Why? I have the thing that gets rid of TV. I can't believe you sell us both. Yeah. It's really weird. <laughs> I The only thing I miss is uh, highlight packages like TSN. I wish I could just get TSN. But can you, you can probably just stream it or something, eh? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that, like, just streaming a channel. Because I do find it harder to keep up with sports with... Uh, Without having TSN, like you got to go to your way to yeah you go on the internet and look at shit. As is well. there a place that does like uh, Dish Network, like in VODs? The, Dish Network in the states is coming out with like uh, through the internet television service. Cool, and it has t- two of the ESPN channels. It's got some shit like Home and Garden. It's only like twenty channels Cause at I- first. But it's like it's like thirty bucks or something, and it's just straight over the internet. Right. Because that's one of the is, things that like it bothers me about sports is like I, I I wish I would was able to be more interested in sports, but because I'm a comedian, I'm always yeah, on it's, stage it's tough. during it's shows, so tough. and so to catch up, I would have to go watch highlights, which I don't have cable, and there's nowhere on the internet that does it. Yeah. So the thing that I watch instead of sports, I watch uh, like professional Street Fighter or like eSports. <laughs> and the reason for that is because that whole framework was always set up online, so right. it's readily available whenever you want it. So if I miss a whole weekend of fights, and there's yeah. eSports I can just go stream 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah, if it's in Korea, <laughs> then it's great, because you can be yeah. like, yeah, let's see what the Koreans are up to. It's 3 a.m. here. <laughs> and, then, and then you're watching, like, I hope I never face a Korean in my life. Yeah, they're the best. It's ridiculous. They're so crazy. They're all robots. I just like, uh, like a, having that <laughs> package put together for you. You know, like the, that whole highlight package. You put it on late at night, and you just go brain dead. Yeah. Then download the information. Gives you something to talk about at the mill the next day with a bunch of... Yeah, it's true. It's true. Life. When it's when it's put together for you, that's uh, it's really good. Cause yeah, like uh, the problem with me is that I then have to go. Like I can't watch highlights. I have to then watch like the entire event, which right. took like three hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll watch the whole thing, which I guess is fine. I don't know. It's like it goes back to the days of people like taping the ball game and then they watch it. Right. Um. When you said you do writing, what kind of writing do you mean? Uh, I work on a web series, and uh, I do a podcast as well. And I, What's the name of your web series and podcast? You can plug them. Uh, the web series is over now. It was for the Comedy Coup. Okay. Um, and that was, uh, it was called Roll for Damage. It might be coming back. I'm also in a web series called Playing Blind, which is going to be coming this year. Uh, we're going to reboot it. And uh, it's basically, the concept of it is, it's my friend, uh, or there's like a couple of us that, uh, that play video games, and one of us is blindfolded and playing the game. 
Right. And the other person does not have a controller, but they can see what's happening on the screen. Oh, and they're trying to so explain. So they have to explain what to do to the oh, person no. who has the controller. And oh. it's uh, it's real painful to watch. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. And it's a lot of just yelling at each other, uh, which it can be quite funny. How How long are the episodes? They're about five, six minutes. Right. And you know, you, where do you post them? Uh, the, the, YouTube? the YouTube channel... Uh, we're going to actually make a Playing Blind YouTube channel, but okay. they were posted. Uh, my friend ran a site called Retro Grand Prix for a long time, which was another video game event that he used to do, where he would take retro games and make a whole bunch of us play through. Like, you would have contests basically set up in all these old games. So right, right. Like, an old like Street Fighter 2 match, and then, wow, like, ice hockey for Nintendo. That like, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I, um, we'll edit this part out of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> And then you just have your own thing. I, I wish you could do that at EXP, but it's like you need a gaming license if you're going to do anything like that, which is so stupid because it's like you aren't you aren't it's not gambling. gambling money, but mm. you still technically like you can't. They can't have like a PlayStation Four set up and just someone playing the PlayStation Four at EXP. Really? Because, yeah, because it's considered gaming. Because Vancouver so, Liquor License. Really? So yeah, it's electronic stupid. gaming. It's oh, yeah, it's, really? It's so, the dumbest. BC liquor laws are like the worst in the world. Uh, it's horrible. I'm pretty sure technically women aren't allowed to drink yet in public, <laughs> <laughs> according to the BC liquor laws. That's funny. It's terrible. Like they were, you know, the amount of them that were just like made in like the 70s or like way earlier, and they're just like. Well, you know, I think that's a lot of laws in it. general, right? We, yeah. like so yeah. many laws were made so long ago they're just irrelevant now yeah we were talking like, about it still doing it? earlier yeah. where any of the clubs and the theaters you can't drink on stage in bc yeah mm-hmm. any other province or state yeah or state american comics are always like what yeah can't drink on stage why? <laughs> I've seen a few of them like almost throw hissy fits, and you're like, Dude, oh, yeah. just grow up, all yeah. right? Just take a bottle of water, or I just like I've uh, take a step ask, off ask for a coffee cup, yeah, ask for a mug, yeah, put it and, in a mug, and then just say, hey, I'm drinking coffee, and then give a big wink. The crowd will get it. Chris, a and- uh, friend of mine, Chris Gordon, very funny comedian, drinks out of a popcorn bucket. Yep, like there's, really? there's yep. like the big. He's fucking crazy. The big popcorn. <laughs> He's a maniac things he'll just be like he'll drink and then he'll be like mm, have you guys tried the popcorn butter here <laughs> yeah it's delicious <laughs> have you ever worked south of the border um a little bit you just did bumber shoot just i did bumber shoot mexico and brazil yeah i did brazil <laughs> <laughs> i was at the world cup <laughs> doing some sets uh yeah i've, I've worked down there I, I like it a lot american crowds you know people are always like Oh, it's so different. I'm like, not really. Seattle especially is like very similar to a Vancouver crowd. Yeah. Seattle and Vancouver are very similar cities. Seattle just has more hills, and you can buy beer at the drugstore. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge thing in the States, eh? You yeah, know. you can buy booze anywhere. Yeah, it's fucking awesome, man. Like I, it, so I, much, everything's so cheap, too. Like, I went down there for a jet ski competition. Yeah. And it was like, every morning, it was like 20 bucks. I could get a tin of chew, a like six-pack of beer couple protein bars and like two Gatorades. Yeah. And you're like, that's 20 bucks. This thing here costs $24. It sounds like someone who uses (laughs) on it right there. (laughs) Yeah. 24 bucks. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And that stuff is like very, it's important to, especially for flying. Like if you got to go on a long flight. Yeah. Like you're going to be necking in like an hour. Yeah. It's like chewing tobacco is a great thing. And they always, and they always talk about it. Just trying to get that sponsor. Because the problem is like the airlines always bring it up. Too. They're always like, hey, just so you know, still can't smoke. You know how you smoke? You're thinking about smoking, aren't you? Yeah, because I keep saying smoking. There's no smoking on the aircraft. Now you really want to smoke, don't you? Well, too bad. You can't have one. I like how there's still no I, I hate there. how they still have the sign illuminated. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like, it's just, like we have someday he's going to turn it off. You're yeah. going to be on some magical flight there where the switch? captain just goes, fuck it, and he flips it off, and everyone <laughs> yeah. just goes, this is crazy. It's they, like the 70s. They turn on Metallica. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> forget it. That's like a, somebody does a bit. I forget. It's a British comic. They do a bit about like they should have one airline that's just like fuck it airlines, <laughs> where like everything's allowed. It's like I don't care. Bring your guns and knives. Let me smoke. We'll drink whiskey. <laughs> Pilot can be fucked up. Just Ticket a party. It only costs eighty bucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're cheap. Well, the thing is with planes, there used to be more room. You used to get like better food on flights. There were yeah. it was much more luxurious luxurious before they started sardine cannon. First of all, thing. you used to get peanuts on a fucking plane. You used now. to get booze for free. Yeah. Yeah. Booze was yeah, like yeah. part of it. You yeah. get uh, you get just a, so everybody could handle it. Yeah. <laughs> on WestJet they give you half a beer, I think, if you fly in that shitty prop planes they got running from What are you talking tonight? about? I was in one of those no. on the way up you here. You gotta pay for it. <laughs> it no. Fucking suck. And did they offer you beer? They offered me fuck all. They made me power down my phone. They're like, I want to watch. I need to watch it go off. I need to watch it turn off. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was oh, ridiculous. Is that because it's such this a This flight attendant was like trying to win an award for what a cunt. fucking worst. Yeah. Fucking cunt. I can't believe oh. like some of the flight attendants just like take that power trip to the I absolute always, uh, maximum. Like they're like, you can't, sir, sir. <laughs> They'll wake you up to make sure you take your headphones out. I was like, yeah. fucking, See, I'm I, asleep. I was flying. Yeah. Leave me alone. I was flying Air Canada when I went out east. And they're like, uh, if you have cellular stuff. Just uh, you know, turn off turn off the data because you aren't gonna get it in the air. <laughs> like, yeah, like, save do, your battery. Do, we don't want your yeah, battery yeah, to yeah. die, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on airplane mode, man. You're not gonna have any phone battery by the time you land. Do, do we need to turn off the phone? No. I turn my phone Technically, on. Technically, you. D- it's What's fine. airplane mode for? I just go airplane mode. It seems like that has to work. I don't yeah. know what it is. But yeah. it, well, it turns airplane off. Mode? It turns yeah. off. I'm all in airplane the, mode. You fucks. It turns yeah. off all the wireless stuff. Yeah. So it turns off the Bluetooth wireless connection, the data connection. But Air Canada's great because they're like, you can you can uh, use your phones now. Yeah. Kindles. Like, they used to freak out about a Kindle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or like, if you crazy. can read a book, that's fine. You can read a book. But if you have a Kindle, like, no, nah, you got to turn that off. Really? Put it away. Yeah. Put it, turn it off and put it away. Like, you can't even, like, have it off, like, on your lap. Like, put it away. Put it, put it in your carry-on, then put it in the top, then lock the top, <laughs> and then... Look out the window. Don't, <laughs> don't touch it. Don't even think about it. You're like, what? I just want to read this book. I, like, man, no. they, I open. I bring my laptop and I open it up every time. Yeah, that's I, awesome. I also like, like the fact do they, that are, do they not let you do that normally? WestJet have become the worst. It's yeah. weird. It's like over the past year and a half since WestJet's become like bigger. Like when yeah. they were first started, they, they used were to like, be the best. They, they were, were like so the underdog great. airline. Yeah, and they were like, yeah, no, everything's we're cool. We know how to do stuff. We're going to be yeah. funny we're, when we're giving funny. the announcements. And then now they like they really need to scale it back on the funny because like nobody. It's not funny at all. None it's of the terrible. none of the flight attendants it's understand terrible. the difference between humor and condescending. Like cause they're just condescending. They're like, you got to turn your phones off, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, Ugh, I hate you so much. I just want to open the emergency exit. <laughs> I, you know, I thought it was, they used to have the, I mean, they still have the live TV, which I thought was pretty cool. Didn't have it on the, on the way up here. Well, you were on one of those puddle jumpers. Is that but a if you're Dash on, 8 turbo prop. Oh. <laughs> Q400. Single engine Cessna. I wish. <laughs> that would have been more fun. That would have. I I've would, taken I the small flights, it. like great. the it's ones so where there's just one row of seats. Yeah. Like when you go up to like Fort Nelson. Yeah. yeah. Those planes are dope because they don't even have security. They're like, yeah, yeah just get on, whatever. <laughs> Bring, your hunting, Bring your hunting knife. That's... Some guy's cleaning a gun in like seat number two. <laughs> We're gonna need. We might go down. We don't know. <laughs> Alex, thank turn... God you brought that gun. If we crash, you can shoot us a moose. <laughs> this must turn into the edge at some point. Yeah. yeah. The gray. The gray. <laughs> oh, what a piece of shit movie. My my buddy Alex Wood. He's a comedian from out in Ontario. Yeah. Uh, he he was doing a show in the Northwest Territories, and he was like. I get, I got to be careful with what I pack. I was like, no, you don't. You're hopping on a little private plane. You fucking pack whatever. Yeah. I'm like, don't you know? Don't go stand up wielding a gun like a psycho. But yeah. you're fine. Bring bring cutlery with you. No one's gonna give a shit. You're cool. Yeah, man. When you're flying in like really small planes, like when I uh, when I used to skydive, you jump out a plane like these tiny little uh, Cessnas, and like they don't even have seats in them, and you have to get in in a certain order. Because if everyone gets in and puts too much weight on the back, the plane just tips over. Yeah. And then they're like, ah, we have one out, everyone out. We got to prop this thing back up <laughs> and get going. And uh, takeoff is like, you're like monkey fucking a guy. <laughs> like, you, they put two guys in the front, and then you got to kneel down and put your head on your knees. And then the two guys behind you have to climb up over top of you nice. and lean <laughs> forward. And they're like, everyone lean forward. <laughs> And yeah. like that's the scariest part of skydiving. You're like, holy fuck! Like you really feel like if you shift, you're gonna fuck this takeoff up. Or, yeah. 
and just take this thing down. Well, Beast it's like riding a, riding a motorbike, too, with a passenger is, like, the worst. Like, I used to ride a sport bike. Right. And, like, anytime somebody's on the back and they start fucking up your leaning, you're like, oh, oh gee, like, <laughs> stop it. Like, every yeah. time you go into a corner, they're, like, trying to compensate for you, like, yeah. leaning right, the other right. way. And you're like, stop doing that. Just follow what I do with my body. And they're like, mm, and you're like, yeah, we're going to go down. It's crazy how much, like, that... You know, 100-pound Asian girl that I have on the back is really messing it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your thing? But they, they've they got – so so WestJet with the 737s that they fly, they've got the, they've got the live television. And I always thought that was, like, the coolest shit because I, yeah, I could watch a fucking game mm-hmm. that's happening. And then the first – not the – was it the first time I went – no, the second time I flew out east – I was flying uh, Air Canada on one of the fucking Airbus ones that they have. And the TV systems that they have, they've got, like, it's all VOD, yeah. which kind of sucks. Because you're like, exactly. I was like, oh, this is going to suck. Like, I don't, you know, I can't watch, like, fucking live sports. I can't see right. the highlights. And then I'm like, they have movies that are still in the theaters on this thing. And it was way better. That's yeah, it's way better. It's fucking cool. Yeah, you think I want to watch fucking how it's made on the plane? <laughs> yeah, I'm already bored. I'm gonna watch popsicles come off the assembly line. Like, oh great, this is such a great flight. Um, oh, that's how they put the sticks in. <laughs> I, I Before call- it's frozen. Oh wow, genius. <laughs> I I called a guy on a flight. A guy that was sitting next to me, a fat fuck, and he apologized to me. Nice. Which, <laughs> wow, guys, you're just ruffling feathers. I'm kidding. No, I, well, I, I was watching. Uh, I was I was on one of the WestJet flights that they booked for me, so it was like the live TV, and I was watching something, and he was so big that he moved his arm and fucking started changing my channels without noticing. Right. And I was like, "Hey, fat fuck, dude, you're changing." The TV, and he's like, "Oh, sorry about that, man." Hey, he probably just I, didn't hear you say "fat fuck." Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure he heard it. <laughs> so no, I, buy I, it. I have a, I have a feeling it went like this. Hey, uh, fat fuck, you're uh, changing channels. <laughs> there. Change your channel. Hey, F squared. What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Something cool kids say. Anyway, changing the channels, bro. <laughs> um, how did you like? What's doing the debaters like? Uh, it's really fun. It's a great show. I know that's like a really uh, like renowned show. Like everyone. Yeah, it's uh, it's super fun to do. How did you get involved in it? Um, um, I got involved through, I think the producer had seen me at the Vancouver Comedy Festival uh, a couple times, and then I got to do, the first debate I ever did was with uh, very funny Erica Sigurdsson, and uh, I kind of was uh, labeled, I guess early on, as like the kind of technology, uh, because they, they kind of like everybody to have like a specific thing, like that you're, right. like anybody who has like a a topic that they know a lot about. And mine was always kind of science and tech. So any of the debates that I did early on and still even now are like usually technology based. So right. like the first debates I did were like uh, text messaging uh, is ruining our lives. And then I did high school <laughs> math is the most important class in high school. Right. And then just like I think a few others I've done since then, I've done a couple of relationship debates, which are really fun. But uh, I think early on it was kind of cool because I kind of had a, a bit of a brand that they were able to identify and just like, yeah, we can have this young guy who knows about computers come and talk to people. And then, yeah. you know, and it's really fun to do like the pair ups. Like I got to debate John Wing on CGI in movies. Yeah. And so that's like a really cool dynamic because like he's like an older guy and he's talking about like, oh, films, films, he's, films, a he's, a, he's a curmudgeon. He's it was fantastic. Curmudgeon. And, uh, and, you know, I was like this sprightly youth who's like, nah, I like <laughs> explosions. <laughs> uh, and it's a really fun show just because it's recorded in front of a live audience at a big theater. Oh, okay. And uh, the crowds there are like just super into it because it's such a fun show. And so the yeah. people who come out, they understand that it's uh, it's a performance and it's a, it's a show. And they're just really excited to be there and be part of it. Like, because a stand-up show, there's always going to be somebody or some contingent of the audience that is there uh, to challenge the idea of the show. Like, they're always kind of like, mm, we'll see if this is good. Like, that's just kind of the attitude that I right. think a lot of people have now, especially people who've never been to comedy before. Yeah. They always kind of go in with the attitude of, like... Especially with clubs. Yeah, exactly. Comedy clubs. Like, people go to a comedy when club. When you're doing a theater, not as much. It yeah. can still happen in a theater show, but when you're doing a club, it... I. 
sometimes you just get those audience members. Yeah, of course. People go to a comedy club the same way I would go to medieval times, right? I don't respect <laughs> the fact that they're fighting with swords. It's stupid and it's dumb. And so I think a lot of people have that attitude with stand-up. They're like, these idiots are just going to talk about their dicks for an hour. Which I'm going to get drunk correct. and yell at them. It's correct. Which is that's correct. What we're doing. Yeah, that's fine. If you want to come and do that, that's cool. So performing for no, a CBC audience. No, it's not audience. fine that they do that. Don't fucking say that. Yeah, all right. God, don't that do that. Pisses. Don't don't do it. It's Treat it what, like you're uh, watching a movie. Yeah, I mean, the like, ideal like situation. Like a white person watching it. We... <laughs> okay, all right. We don't need to bring racism into this. You ever been into a theater with a bunch of black people? Yeah. It's fucking insanity. Don't, yeah, don't... they just watch the movie, not... Chris. No, they don't. They just want to get into it. Yeah, they get into fine. it way too much. It's, I think it's fine. It's the Hulk. What, are you, are you going to miss the subtleties? Yeah. <laughs> I was Actually, I was really I'd glad love to go people see the Hulk like, with a bunch of black that people. Guy. That'd be it the was shit. Perfect. I was I joined in. It was great. <laughs> I joined in. Um, <laughs> makes it way more fun. They're in the right. Uh, but yeah, the CBC crowds are like uh, they're into it because they're fans of the show. Like anytime you perform for people who are already a fan of the thing that they're coming to see, is a very different energy. Right. Yeah. They've already decided to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. They don't have to be convinced. You don't have to sell them on something they've already bought. Yeah. Which is what you have to do with a lot of stand up, right? right? Like people will still pay to go into a show, but then when they're in there, they're like, we'll see if I like this. You know, everybody thinks they're a goddamn Yelp reviewer. Like, shut yeah. up. <laughs> if you don't want to see comedy, don't come to comedy. Like, just don't. I don't understand why you're here to not enjoy yourself. Like, because everybody wants that story, right? Or there are people out there who want to have that story because it's a more interesting story to be at work the next day. And be like, oh, yeah, no, I went to a comedy club. It was super great. I really loved it. That doesn't make you a winner. But right. if you go to the if you go to work the next day and you're like, oh, fucking, yeah, I saw this comic last night. Fucking such a piece of shit. Aren't I the best? Let's all touch dicks. I'm great because I hated him. <laughs> like, it's a power move, right? If yeah. You think that you place yourself above this other person, this comedian, by saying that you didn't like what they did. But really, if you don't enjoy a comedy show, it's probably your fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. if somebody's headlining a comedy club... They're good at comedy. Like, that's kind of usually what's going on. Yeah. Or they've done some nefarious deeds to get them there. <laughs> <laughs> have, yep. you ever, yeah. have you ever had a, uh, like, a heckler just, like, not stop? Yeah. And someone just keeps yelling at you? And... They're yep. called bachelorette parties. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, or an entire audience in trail. <laughs> <laughs> I did a show in Trail where, like, nobody would shut up. It was just everybody was talking, especially this one person in the front row, and I eventually just gave her the microphone. I was like, you want to sing a song? Yeah, get up here. I don't care. I'm paid by the hour. Yeah. <laughs> what, Come on uh, up. Houston, BC. Like, again, if, if a show is is going poorly, uh, it's not my fault. Like, if it's something that's outside of my control, like people are being assholes in the crowd, it's like, I don't I don't care. Yeah. It's not, it's not up to me. I'm not a bouncer. I'm yeah. a fucking comedian. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to make light of the situation. I'm going right. to be like, yeah, sure. Whatever you want to do. Come on up. Let's, let's have this. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> At the end of my 45 minutes, I'm going to be paid exactly the same, regardless of how I handle this. Right. I'm not going to like make a stand. Right. I don't care. Yeah. Right? It's like I'm so tired of people being like, oh, yeah, see? You see, like, like anybody's going to record it and put it on YouTube and I'll be some f comedy folk hero. <laughs> For putting in way more effort than I should have. Yeah. I don't care. I'm getting paid exactly the same. Anybody who tries to do that, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Tonight's the night I saved the show. Like, you know how much effort you just put into that for no more money? You're a fucking scab. Yeah. <laughs> the, the worst part of that is you're going to be a comedy folk hero with just other comics. Yeah, with like, just comics. Part, is it's like, it's not going to be some regular guy. Yeah. Like, that happens so rarely. No you know one's going to watch. Like, the whole idea of, like, people watching videos of, like, comedian destroys heckler. And it always just shows, it shows the heckle, the interaction with the heckler, and then, like, the reaction from that. And, and then, and then yeah. the video's over. Like, you don't have to watch the other 30 minutes of that show where this comic now sucks at doing material. Yeah. Because this interaction with the heckler was the most entertaining <laughs> thing of the night. And nobody wants to hear their jokes anymore. Right. And it's an overall terrible show. Yeah. You know, just make the show good. That's what people want to see. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'd do if someone started heckling me. I have no idea. I, I mean, always it's feel... It's not really a fear. Like, I, I don't really ever think of it. It's... it's. I always tell people, like... Here's, here's your how to handle a heckler 
question. <laughs> yeah. With the lava. No, it's with yeah. the lava. We it's always on there. I have lava. I bring a cup of lava. But I always treat them just like I'm at a party and they're d- being loud at a party. Like, it's like, it's the same thing. Say you're, like, when you're doing a set, it's like you're standing in a kitchen at a party telling a story. Right. Somebody walks into the kitchen who hasn't heard parts of the story. Yeah. And they're like, I fucking gotta see what the dog's doing. And then you're like... <laughs> Yeah, okay, just hold on, man. I'm kind of in the middle of something. Yeah. And just treat them like a person. Like, the amount of people that, like, will flip out on a heckler, like, they go zero to a hundred. Right here. So fast. And it's like, why did you do that? You overreacted. (laughs) This person is just excited most of the time. I I don't know the conventions of this little world that we live in and pretend it's something everybody knows about. It's funny. It took me, like, a while to understand that. And then the second I understood it, like, I pulled back with hecklers so much that it shocked people because all of a sudden, you know, someone would heckle in and then... I'd handle it, and everyone would be like, "Wow, that was that was like fucking masterful." You know, and I was like, yeah. "Well, I don't want to ruin their night too." Like, yeah. I realize that that they're just trying to have fun, and they just don't understand. Yeah, the ultimate uh, dealing with a heckler is where everybody feels like they won. Where yeah, they, even the heckler comes up after the show and is like, "That was great, man." Good stuff. And you're like, yeah, cool, no problem. Yeah, and then he's walking away, and you're just muttering shit under your yeah. breath. You're like, fucking Whatever. stupid asshole. But, you know, like, I'm Dunk not... Con- people. If people are educated in how to conduct themselves at a show, that's just, like, what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, you, ideally, uh, what you should be putting effort into as a comedian is not how to handle hecklers. It's how to get w- renowned enough that the seats for your shows have been purchased by people who like you and not asshole stag parties. Yeah. You know, like when, when your fans are buying the the seats before the stag parties can, that's how you win. Yeah. It's, it's very rare though that this like stag parties can be really bad. It's usually the stag ads that are just, I don't know. They're the same. I think they're the same. Yeah. They're just drunk. No, you're probably right. They're just a group of drunk people. Birthday (laughs) parties are the same. Anytime there's a group of people that feels like they are now in the right because they're, there's like, yeah. you know, there's eight of them. And they're like, there's more of us than any other table. This yeah. show's for us. I, yeah. I was watching Orangy Adams and I just happened to have a friend from high school that was in the audience and she was with her friend and it was like their birthday, like her birthday. Yeah. And she was like super drunk and like saying shit. And. I'm kind of sitting on the side and my friend had got up and like walked over and we're kind of off to the side talking just to make sure that it's not, no one could hear us talk. And she goes, she goes, I don't understand why, you know, you treat someone like that. And I go, this is a performance. Like you shouldn't be shouting shit out. And she just went, oh, I guess that makes sense. And I was like, yeah, Yeah, why? People don't get it. Some people think you're supposed to heckle in a comedy club. Uh, Mm Mm-hmm. Like that's part of it, right? It's like, isn't that isn't that what we do? I I, I think the worst ones, <laughs> no? the worst ones are those guys that are like, I'm trying to help out, and you're like, well, you're not. No, you're not. You, that's a lie. That's like a lie. That's like, no, yeah. I didn't. I didn't see how fast I was going, officer. Fuck you. <laughs> you knew exactly what you were doing. <laughs> you were trying to be the center of attention. A lot of times when those guys yell out, it's because of like an alpha male yeah. instinct yeah, in oh, their yeah, yeah, brain yeah. where they can't. It's not even voluntary. <laughs> they're just so drunk that they're like, hey, wait a minute. I should be the center of attention. This is really bothering me that I'm not. I better yell. Yeah. Right here. Start... Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah. This guy's not funny. And yeah. then the whole crowd goes, ooh. Yeah, I don't know why the crowd is so insane. What are you going to say to that, Mr. Comedian? Yeah. Ooh. Does it make me a bad person? I really want to click on this video. It says five-year-old tossed from bridge. Uh, No. No. Because... Uh, because you know now he lived. I want to click on that. You video. know he lived. Well, Spoiler it's on, alert: it's on, wouldn't be online if he died. It's on CNN though, and yeah. I don't know if they're actually gonna have the video of Hold it. Hold on, Probably that, just my reaction. beautiful, the best part. Okay, I gotta watch it. Florida Let's has see. died after she was tossed off a bridge. Oh, she's dead. Okay, so we're not gonna talk to her. But he saw he was headed home, and he saw. Oh, this isn't gonna be good. I don't want to see this lady talk about it. I really want to see that. You want to see the video? I want to see like the baby fucking... go off the bridge. It reminds no. me of uh, Anchorman. Well, this sounds like a drive-by tossing kind of thing. A drive-by tossing? Jeez. Where it's like he didn't... It's like the baby's like a McDonald's rapper. He just... Yeah. I'm done with this. I put the window down. She just flew out. I had no, <laughs> no chance. See, I, uh, it, it got, I got really windy this, in the I back. I can't take anything serious. Like, I have a five-year-old. It would be devastating if she fell off a bridge. 
Yeah. But uh, like I look at that headline, I'm like, that seems kind of funny yeah, to see. <laughs> well, but falling and I tossing is two it. different things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Fall off a bridge is like, ah, fuck, kind of fucked up. But you got tossed off a bridge. You're like, what was that guy thinking? <laughs> I have a couple of questions. There's a lot of synonyms there. Was w- thrown? Tossed. <laughs> what made yeah. it a toss? <laughs> like a coin toss? Was it from the chest? Yeah. Was it a was it a chest pass? It wasn't like an underhand. <laughs> I like this headline too. You just go right to CNN. Dead, 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 wanted. Well, that's from that terror attack. Yeah, it's the France thing. That guy's dead. I thought that guy just surrendered. Maybe they shot him anyway. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, he's got to go down. It's always brothers, isn't that weird? In these what do you things? mean by brothers? Like <laughs> two guys that are related. Okay. Yeah. Uh, by birth. What do you mean by brothers? <laughs> Same mother. I never meant anything. Okay. <laughs> it just seems like uh, it. There's a lot of uh, cases right now with big terror attacks where it's like it was two brothers, right. <laughs> and they yeah. got together and they did it, and it's like. And they always blame the older one because the younger one just looked up to the older one. Yeah, it's that's like, what it is. The, the older one was crazy. The young one just really loved his big brother, man. Yeah. Just really that one kind of went away quickly. Those what were they like Sar- Chechnyan kids or whatever? Sarnia. The Boston, Boston bombers. bombers. Sarnia, yeah. yeah, I think it was. They kind of well, just... the younger ones on trial right now. Yeah, I don't know, man. It just seems crazy. Like two, two brothers working alone in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. You see how many explosions there were outside the uh, what was like where the police raided? No, today? I didn't. I don't even know what this. There was is. like a big firefight. They raided a, a, I forget. It was like a grocery store or something <laughs> where they were. They like they hold up and there was like, just yeah, so much stuff. But I mean, I guess from this we can see that there were more people. But yeah, I don't know. Well, it's now always, a it's weird a, thing. Anytime I've... there's one of these events, it's always like there were eight suspects in a car, and then and then like two days later, it's like we found the two. It's yeah, like, you just said there were eight. <laughs> well, well, that was like when when they were talking about the the Boston bombings, like right after it, and they were talking about oh we're looking for two people. They set off pressure cooker bombs, and then they'd have like the bomb expert on there, and they're like, so how would they do it? And he's like, I don't know. You know how hard it is to time a fucking pressure cooker bomb. You think two people set off two of them perfectly? Did they ever explain their motive? That doesn't make sense to me. And they're like, so it was just the two people, right? Like, Yeah, they're just, basically they have a bomb expert being like, so it was two people, right? Wink. <laughs> yeah. and then <laughs> Not the, all those guys in black cargo pants walking around for no reason. Yeah, and, and the bomb <laughs> Why expert. Why were they all there? The bomb <laughs> expert sitting there like they that They were makes, called in. They were called in yeah. before it even happened. <laughs> yeah, and meanwhile, the bomb expert's going, that doesn't make sense, and, and the anchor's still back with just one eye closed. Yeah. Hey, come on, play along. I love... Uh, so you guys seen... think there was more than the two in the Boston Bombing? Did they ever explain their motive? Did they ever explain whether they were just psychopaths or whether they had some sort of like religious Wasn't ideology? It, uh, or that they were that... brothers. Yeah. That... They, were bro- <laughs> they were brothers. It had to be done. Uh, there were two of them. <laughs> what do you mean by brothers? <laughs> there were two uh, of them and they were brothers. <laughs> young one was a good kid, you know. It, just... it, good kid. Uh, brothers. Well, wasn't the DC sniper like a... Uncle... It was a dad nephew a kid thing? Or Uncle something, nephew, it? yeah. It was Uncle Nephew? Was. Okay. He's a good shot. Yeah. He was a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did a crazy thing where it was like he was he would shoot from inside the trunk of a car. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. But they were just picking off people at gas stations, so there was no way like they were just killing to kill. Yeah. So there was no way to track like where they were gonna be next. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the uh probably the hardest thing. I always wondered that. Like if you just went out and killed someone with like no motive and nothing. That's probably the hardest one to solve, right? Well I think it happens more than you think it You're does. gonna look right away they're gonna look for someone who had something against that person and those people become immediate suspects. Yeah. And yeah, I but wonder, that, can you because, even get yeah, it's charged? It's like Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was a man. He had one arm. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right, buddy. <laughs> what? Uh, was it that guy? He's got one arm. It was that guy. It was you. <laughs> I always you. wondered, like, if you, if they can't find a body, like, I don't think you can even get charged, can you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people are declared uh, when they're missing. Yeah, you can be. Yeah, but when they're just missing, like if you if they never find a body, they don't announce it dead. Yeah, they will. Yeah, yeah. Will they after yeah. a certain amount of time. Okay, it's like seven years or something. Like Michael Dunahee. Yeah, found mm. that guy. I don't know that. Although he's still on the like uh, missing persons. Michael Dunahee was a kid who he was like kind of the uh, they started the Amber Alert thing from him. Oh, okay. Um, and he was a kid that got grabbed at a playground in like I think it was in Victoria. This is back in like 1990 or like 91. 
This is after Amber Alerts, but okay. Yeah, but he was kind of the one that uh, made it like a big A big deal. thing, yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was yeah, the yeah. first big one yeah. that they kind of put on like the uh, national uh, manhunt and everything. Yeah. And it was weird for, for my family because uh, he looked a lot like me. And so <laughs> that summer, like my parents and I were driving to Saskatchewan to visit my grandmother. And, and just And we kept of, getting stopped yeah. in coffee shops because like I was just like a blonde kid who was about the same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they kept... Like, police kept questioning my parents, being like, who are these kids? Are they yours? And my parents were like, yes, they're our kids. Yeah. Do you have papers to prove it? Yes. Yeah. That's like that uh, Brian Regan joke where he talks about the uh, Arab Americans who really want to get into crop dusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I have a couple of pamphlets? Uh, let me guess. You're going to need to make a phone call. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're missing a Brian Regan show right now, aren't you? Uh, tonight, yeah. Tonight, yeah. I came to Prince George to perform instead of seeing Brian Regan. I have to call my brother and make sure he actually goes. I'm giving him the tickets. He has not uh, responded, but he got the email that I sent of the tickets. I, I just enjoyed you trailing off in disappointment. Yeah. I'm doing a show in Prince George instead of seeing Brian Regan. No, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great show tonight. Come on down, everybody. Nancy O's. Yeah. I had a really good time last night. Brian Major, MC. Brian Major's the MC. Uh, uh, Christopher Gaskin that, that's will be me. on the show doing yeah. uh, hilarious jokes. Well, uh, I'll try. Maybe the cook will get up and do some time again. Yeah. Maybe. Is that not the funniest fucking thing? It's great. I think it's awesome. <laughs> I've done. There's a few places where they, they allow that to happen. And it's great because if the food's really good, the cook already gets a bit of a break. Off yeah. the top, right? Because people just ate, and they're like, man, that food was good. The food the is guy's good. guy's like, though. I'm the guy that made it. And they're like, we love you already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're already fans of yours. <laughs> so uh, for the listening audience, uh, Alex has left to lock his dog in another room. Is that what's happening? It's just explaining nope. to the listeners. Oh, the dog? Yeah. The dog's going to relax. The second yeah. he's in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come, Come on in. Come on in. See, now he's getting attention, no, and then eventually no, no, no. he's going to sit no. down. Hey, he's he's okay. going to lay down, Christ. and everything will be fine. Okay, we'll try it for five. Yep, I'll trust me. Chance. It'll be fine. Oh, my God. Really good. Keeps. She's just, he's, like, or he's going to unplug everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do any of us not like dogs? I love dogs. See? Yeah, I think it's fine. Dogs are the greatest. They're not. This is like the, there was an episode of uh, the Joe Rogan experience. Did you want like a water or something? Uh, can Bad you ball? pass me a Guinness? I can. Wait, there's Guinness in there? Oh, fuck. Yeah. How about it? There we go. Now we're talking. Now we're getting things started. What were you guys talking about while I was gone? Is it my hair? Uh, we were talking about uh, no. how my uh, uh, I looked like Michael Dennehy, and the cops stopped my parents a whole bunch when we were driving across the country. Oh, really? That's because awesome. they thought that uh, I was him. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> that old mix-up? Yeah, uh, because we were talking about missing people. Because you... We were talking about killing <laughs> random people. Well, yeah, realistically. <laughs> and just having no trace back to you. And what's that? Like, people have to be... There has to be a couple guys walking around doing that. Yeah. yeah. As we speak. But the other thing... They're that, like, just picking off random people. Yeah. And nobody has... A, there's some cop who's just eating at fucking food carts, trying to track this guy down, <laughs> flashing his bat on every small store owner. Have you seen but, this man? Have you seen this man? It's like the scene from Terminator 2. Yeah. Well, you know, have you seen yeah, this right. kid? The yeah. amount of cold cases, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. But, but it's also some like... Some guy like Dan Aykroyd in Dragnet. It's also like some something like two-thirds are from people that they know anyways. Yeah. So... The amount, so like, have you ever watched the show, The First 48? It's yeah. like crazy how people suck at oh, not... Yeah. Getting caught, <laughs> they'd be like, "I'm gonna go fucking kill that guy," and then they do, and then people are like, "You just said you were gonna kill him, and then you killed him." We yeah. have eight witnesses that saw you walk over there with a gun, announcing you were gonna kill him the entire time you were walking over there. Yeah, yeah. He's like, "Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do it." <laughs> I like uh, Tom Segura's like got the- a good bit on that, eh? On the first forty-eight. Oh, I don't know. I, He's talking I, about. Uh, that was his he's whole, like He's like lie. His Why whole hour at lie? the time. Like, you just killed someone. Yeah. All you got to do is tell another lie. 
Mm-hmm. No, it off to wasn't me. I didn't do it. He's like, but then they're always like, are you sure you didn't do it? Like, oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> His- and he's like, he talks about like getting a lawyer. He's like, I've seen every episode of the first 48. He's like, and two cases the guy has gotten off, both times in which the guy requested that he have a lawyer. And right away, they're just like, Ah, fuck, all right. <laughs> and, and they just let him go. <laughs> hey, get out of here. Like, all right. It's like, just ask for a lawyer, and you seem to get off. All the other people turn it down, and they try to do it themselves. That's funny. His, his hour at the time was like 45 minutes of that hour was about him watching television. Yeah. It was, and he's, he's like one of the sweetest people you'd ever meet. It's, I always love comics like that. Uh, you're one of those guys. It's like an absolute beast, and off stage, a, a complete mensch. Ah, and ah, get out of here. <laughs> totally. And I like that. Like I, I, I get a lot of heat because I like to ball bust a lot. Yeah. And, and a lot of people just like, yeah, Chris is an asshole. And I'm like, no, I'm not. That's me. That's that's like a verbal hug. Like I like you. That's why I was yeah. saying that stuff. We have to bust each other's balls because if not us, then who? Yeah. Then who? <laughs> <laughs> Who gets to criticize Listen, the? I, there's probably if, a Shakespeare if, quote if about I it. Walked, <laughs> if I walked into the tavern wearing a brooch and no one said anything, that would be a travesty. <laughs> All right, someone had to say something. What's a brooch? I don't think it was technically a brooch. It was. It was. It was a, a pin. That's what a brooch is. No, a brooch is like an old, like a grandmother wears a brooch. That, a pin is a brooch. But no, I don't think I don't think a brooch is like something a guy. It's First not of all, called let's a brooch. Watch him try to spell brooch. <laughs> Two O's. Well, that's pretty close. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. See, those are all yeah, lady that, that brooches. Looks like a grandma. Thing if a guy's sure. wearing a pin, it's a pin. It's like a medal. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna, you gonna like go tell you know tell a general that his medals are all brooches. <laughs> look, look up. Look up. Hey, where'd you get all those brooches <laughs> from? Up. Killing Japs. <laughs> <laughs> look up hand of the king pin. Uh, hand of the king pin. Yeah. From uh, G O T. Yeah. Or uh, S O. I A F. So that, that is what I was wearing. That. that what? <laughs> so in in it's like it's like Thrones. this big, right? It's like this big, like, like a good five five and a half six inches, and immediately I. You call that six inches, Chris? Well, I'm six and a half, so I think I know what six is. Um, I walk. Nothing? Fuck you guys. Love Are you talking one. about that's your waistband? Right. You talking about your waistband? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. With every guy at the mill. Can you uh, call that six inches? So I, I had walked into the tavern, which at that point was still known as Hooker's Green. Yeah. And I I just bought in Game of Thrones season two. Like it came with the season two DVDs. Yeah. And I was like, this is cool. Like everyone watches Game of Thrones. So you can see this. That is awesome. And I walk in and immediately the second I walk in, Steve Coscarella looks at me and goes, Dude, is that a fucking brooch? And I was just like, I'm dead. I'm so dead. <laughs> and uh, I was right. Just a heyday. Did not Did you receive a text from someone? No, I wasn't there. I wasn't I there for... Simon uh, started sending out mass texts to people. I was not around for Brochgate 2012. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gaskin Brochgate. They're calling it a badge here. Yeah, see? see? It's a badge. It's a badge. <laughs> it looks like a badge. Yeah, exactly. You're going to tell a cop a, his badge is a brooch? Yes, I will. Me, give me your brooch number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling this in. Wait, what? Your, the number on your brooch. <laughs> what is it? I'd, I'd, I'd like to file a complaint against brooch number 32795. Uh, <laughs> You're a goddamn loose cannon. I want your brooch on my desk by 4 o'clock. <laughs> Broaching your gun. <laughs> you're you're broaching your slingshot right now. <laughs> oh, Have so you ever done writing for like a for a show? Uh, I've done punch up, which is like uh, uh, where you don't. It's you're just basically making the jokes more concise. Right. So a lot of times, uh, people who write for TV that don't perform live, they're still funny. Their ideas are really funny, but they don't fully understand the best way to deliver the line to get the biggest laugh. Right. Uh, so, for example, like, putting the funniest word at the end of the line, or, like, a lot of people, like, will put something in the middle. Fuck. Always at the end. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. So, like, you know, when you do punch up, you'll just kind of like, or make the setup more concise. Like, sometimes there'll be a punchline, but it'll be, it won't have enough information in the setup of like the other characters. Because basically, okay. like, a sitcom is just like stand up, but instead of you doing the setup, there's another character doing a setup. Like, okay. They yeah, say yeah. something like, I was at the factory today. And then somebody says, Oh, something. you were at the factory? Ain't that funny? I was with your mom. Yeah. Ah! Big yeah, laugh. Exactly. I don't like that was the from laugh shit track. my dad says. Uh, you don't like laugh track? Yeah. No. Laugh track can be uh, pretty annoying. Um, I don't mind live studio audience because the live studio audience, I think, can benefit a show because it gives the actors on stage, uh, it allows them better timing. They can yeah, time yeah. stuff. So if you're watching at home and you're laughing, you're not missing stuff. Yeah. And also it gives them sort of that like, you get an energy from a live Yeah, crowd. for sure. So if it's a live studio audience, that's great. But like canned laughs where they just like add them oh, later yeah. in post. Yeah, it's so weird. Well, have you ever watched, uh, what's that show with the geeks? I don't watch Yeah, you can, watch, you can watch Big yeah, Bang Theory. You can watch Big Bang Theory with no, with with no, no laugh track. Yeah. track. It Holy looks shit. fucking retarded. It's, it's horrendous. It's horrendous. Yeah. But it's like depressing. It's, yeah. <laughs> that show, there's a, there's a flaw in that show that I think. In that it's not funny? Yeah, but like, you, didn't, you could, but you could hire like the best joke writers in the world to come in and write jokes for that show, and it would still be fundamentally flawed because of the fact that it is. Nerds are fucking hot chicks? Yeah, but it's also like the nerds. There's so many flaws in that fucking show. Like, nerds won't like the show because it does, it's mis, it misrepresents nerds, yep. first of all. Uh, it's I've like an anybody Assassin's who Creed watches Jack. anybody who watches that show is de- is probably not a someone who would self identify as a nerd. They're somebody who's like, I know nerds. Yeah, they're like this. Yeah, like it's kind of se- it's removed. But the the uh, the main problem for me in watching that show, and a lot of sitcoms make this mistake, is that you as the audience have no conceivable idea as to why these characters would ever like each other. You know, because all they do is make fun of each other all the time and like right. backstab each other, and they're like such a bunch of fucking dicks to each other constantly, week after week. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. if somebody did the things that they do to each other on that show once to me, I'd be like, well, I'm not calling that guy ever again. <laughs> we're just not friends. Like that's just how yeah. it works. Like you watch Seinfeld. Like yeah, they were the characters were kind of dicks, but you can still understand why they were friends. I, right. And it's it's not something like the league. Where in the league, it's a bunch of guys in a fantasy football league. So it's them trash talking each other. And yeah. it's giving them a reason to fucking be pricks to each other. Yeah. I, I really like that Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Ah, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is hilarious. hilarious. That, that's yeah. great. That, that's what I was going to say. There are some single camera shows that do it so well, though, without the laugh track. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, like of course. Bro- Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Parks and Rec, Modern Family. Rest how do you? How would you get into uh, the office? Like becoming a writer for a show like that? Do you know the, like what's the general route? Uh, the route that I'm sort of trying to take right now is I'm uh, I'm specking scripts. You just basically do spec scripts. Yeah. So you, which you, are which are uh, you write your own script for a show. So okay. you just like I would just write an episode of a show that I like and submit that to the writers of that show and okay. have them look at it. And if it's around. Like, if it's in the ballpark of what they're kind of looking for, then they might bring you on to do punch-up first, and then then they might have you in to sit at the writer's room. The issue with uh, with Canada is that there's kind of two... There's Nothing. two... The two big sitcoms happening right now are Mr. D and Spun Out, yeah. which uh, I know people who work on both of those shows. So Same. I'm trying to spec those shows, and then you submit scripts to them from that, and yeah. then hopefully they'll hire you as a writer. But the other issue is that it's all done in Toronto. And I live in Vancouver. Right. So I would probably have to move to Toronto to write for those shows. But it would be or, a good idea. Or at least move out for half of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And I would do like I would do like a six and six type setup. Where like I that's, would go. that's what Darcy Michael is doing. Darcy Michael's in Spun Out. Yeah. So he spends half his time in Toronto and then the other half of the time in Vancouver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think as an actor, it's different than a writer, though, because like you just have to be there when they're shooting. Right. Like you just basically are on call. Yeah, like you don't have to be there when they're writing in the off. I mean, I don't really fully know what happens. Like, do they write when they're not shooting? Uh, I don't. I think so. They must <laughs> probably. <laughs> they must be writing more often than they're shooting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's you know. Yeah, it takes a lot more writing to get. To like, try to yeah. like TV is long, right? Do the writers that's write. why? Like, I I'd love to do a show like The League or like. Yeah, I mean Kirk, the web where, series that we did was like yeah, where where it's you have your point A semi improvised. But you improvise 
how to get there. But if you go back and watch early Curb, you're like, oh, this this was an issue for sure. Yes. In the sense that like the first three seasons of Curb are still funny, but every scene really grinds your gears because all the actors are yelling over each other so much. Yeah. And you're just like, this is not, I guess it's kind of like real life, but it's still annoying to watch because you're like, I want to hear what some of these people have to say. Well, it's 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 farting with the league because the league has a, a couple guys who are like masters at working with other comics. Totally. At the time, it's just basically it's, it's, a, uh, having Nick, good improvisers. Nick Kroll and Paul Shear. Well, they're both fabulous who, improvisers. Like yeah. They were. They have improvising pedigree. Like, yeah. That's where they came. And from. then and then Steve Rangazizi was like the only one who was just like a solid comic. Yeah. Doing it, but because of that, and because it's all trash talking. They could yell over each other, but they don't. It's like they do like the pile on Mm -hmm. where someone will make a joke about someone and then someone else will do that. And then it'll all tailor into the end of that scene, which is going to tailor into the end of the next scene to the next scene. Like it's it's a brilliant way to do it. Because that's kind of what we did for a role for damage. Like it was just sort of like, okay, here's what's happening in the scene. You're going to say something about this. This is going to happen. And then eventually you're going to die and then you're going to leave. Yeah. I I was watching uh, a couple guys did like a, a YouTube, a short doing that type of thing. And they did like six or seven takes of something. And, and I was trying to tell them like watching them edit it. I was like, next time you do something like this, bring a pad of paper with you. And whenever someone says something funny, write that down so you remember to do it the next time. Yeah, that's and then the you issue. Just keep adding it on until your eighth or ninth take, and then now you've got this fucking beast. Yeah. Uh, of like a two minute clip. Because some people don't, uh, they feel bad doing it again. Because like the first time they'll deliver it, it'll be funny and spontaneous. But yeah. then when they deliver it the second time, it won't have the same energy, energy behind yeah. it, and it won't. It won't come out as good. And that's kind of what separates like good actors for TV. Like doing TV is just so much different than doing stuff live yeah. because when you do something for TV, you do something funny. They're like, oh, that was great. Do that exactly the same way that you did it eight more times. But I, yeah. mean, I mean, that's that's what happens with doing stand up too, though, right? Is like, yeah, but you're doing you're it on a show joke. by show basis. Yeah, yeah of course. But it's not like you're doing the same joke and then they're cutting and then like, do that joke again oh, right no, no, now. No, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. But, but you're just kind of in a flow, right? You'll do a joke and then after like three or four months, like it's just lost its luster because you're just. Are you saying you, this is me personally? Or no, no. This no I was talking about me personally, okay. but I, no, I was talking about just comedy. Yeah, As yeah, whole, no, like, it's it definitely uh, it does happen. Absolutely. It's something that you fall into and you have to remember to uh, to break out of, and then not even joke. Like sometimes that'll happen with your entire act, and it's yeah. like you go and you watch headliners who have been doing the same act for eight years, and you're like, oh, you you don't like this at all. Yeah, it's very evident that you hate what's happening right now. Uh, maybe quit. Stop wasting our time. Because <laughs> like we're in the audience, we're like, yeah, I get it. You're a revered and respected comic, but that was then, and now all you do is you're just sad. You seem sad about your job. Mm-hmm. Like if it's not fun for you, why are you doing it? Oh man, that's muted. People get trapped. People get trapped into it. I guess I don't know. Yeah, they just don't have any other options. And they're like, I'm a, I'm a stand up. Is what I do. Well, that's the thing. Is eventually you reach a point where, you know, you're headlining for six, seven years. And then you're like, oh, I can't do anything else. Yeah. I don't don't have any other marketable skills. Yeah. But also, like, so be a comedian. Like, people forget that, like, the main part of comedy is, like, is writing it. And that's when it becomes fun. Like, people get... Oh, absolutely. That's the most fun part is, like, taking a new joke. It's not the writing part. It's the part of figuring it out on stage. Yeah, the first time you tell a joke and it works, it's there's no feeling like it. It's like you land a skateboard trick for the first time, you know? You yeah. know what a kickflip is. You've seen people do it. The first yeah. time you land it, you're like, "Fucking yes. That was dope." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? And then when you when you get to do that constantly, like you have to make sure you keep that fire. You have to maintain it. Like, yeah, you I can't do. Get I do know it's really exciting. Like I'm really new to this. I can't really talk much about sure comedy, you can. but uh yeah, when you go up there and like you do something new, it is really exciting to see whether it's going to work or not. Totally. And then when it does work, it's it's very thrilling. Yeah, for There's sure. no feeling like it. Yeah. And then when it doesn't work, you just get rid of it. Because like and jokes then... that work really well, like you have an expectation that's already built up. But when something has no expectations and yeah. it just exceeds them, you're like fucking sweet. I do really like the creation part of it. Like I've never been like a artsy type thing. Like I've yeah. never. And I do really look at it now like writing jokes as an art form. 
like you you start out with this little idea and then like as you go you write a little bit then you go and you try it out and then you think of something else you could put in there and then eventually it grows into yeah you know it's like painting it a expands. picture to me it's like a puzzle i was always like i always liked puzzles and games so for me the game in any joke is like trying to find out how to make it the funniest so like that's why yeah. i like doing writing and punch up is because there's that those word puzzles of like taking out the words like what we were talking about last night with using synonyms instead of using the same word yeah yeah again. yeah we're like you know taking that moving words around trying to find the perfect amount of words to get the biggest laugh in the shortest amount of time is like, you know, you're so you can always be editing. And if you're not, you know, say you don't have any new stuff on the go, you can always kind of hone your old stuff. You right. know, people compare it to like uh, making a, a samurai sword. You're always folding the metal and then hammering it down and then yeah. folding it that, again and hammering it down. That's what I always try to tell comics who are like, I haven't written anything. I'm like, work on in, your other months. stuff. And I'm like, then work on the other stuff because eventually. Because you'll, you'll get new tags you'll, and you'll, that yeah, might turn into a whole new Yeah, you'll get new tags and that, and, and then that, and then you'll get inspired and figure out something else out of, like, you know, relatively out of nowhere. It'll come from, you know, you'll see something, oh, shit, I should write about, like, like that's what happened with me when I was out east this most recent time. Like, I didn't come up with anything until on the way back on that fucking yeah. Greyhound ride. Yeah. And it was killing me. But I was constantly, like, working on the act, so... The farther I got, like the better that 30, 40 minutes was getting. Yeah. As I as I got back and then Yeah, you just do it over and over and over again. You know, if you think about it like experience, it's not like it's crazy to me when people say they say how how long they've been doing comedy in years. Because that's easy. That's like an easy measurement of time. Yeah, but right. it doesn't matter how long you've been, like the distance between your first set and now. You only gain experience points when you're on stage. Yeah. You have to be yeah, performing. Yeah. So saying. if you're sitting around not performing, like you're not getting the same amount of grinding that somebody who's actually going on stage is going to get. You know? and, yeah, yeah. and here's the thing that a lot of people don't say, but you learn way more from fucking up than from doing everything right. If you go up there and just kill, and yeah. then you go up and you just do the same set and you just kill every time you aren't going to learn anything but you need both yes you need to kill to keep you inspired you need a balance and keep you a nice balance yeah and you need you know the good shows help you explore the bad shows help you learn yeah what not to do yeah and so so it's like you know you have to have everything you have to be able to try to like for me even as a clean comic like i'm never going to write off like a shitty show to be like oh well that's that's not for me like there's always a way i could have succeeded you know, I want to be able to succeed in every environment. That's kind of your goal, yeah, as a comic. So it's like, like, I'll do you do... write freehand? Like when you're writing a joke, what do you use? Do you use a laptop, or do you write freehand? Or... I always wrote freehand when I started. For the longest time, I resisted writing on a computer, but now it's so much easier to sort your stuff. Though. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's now it's a lot easier. It's also easier to catalog it. Yeah. Like, I use a writing program called Evernote, which syncs with my phone, so that way I don't have to bring a notebook to shows, because I yeah. have it all. I can just access it on my phone and see all the stuff that I wrote that day. Yeah. And I just find that it's it's more helpful to allow the ideas to flow, because I, I write kind of free form where I'll just keep typing no matter what, Right. and just, like, whatever I'm thinking of will just flow. And then from there, like, you know, usually 10% of that is good, and okay. it'll make it to the stage. Like, most of it is just garbage. It's just yeah. going to come out and be like, yeah, nobody cares about this. But yeah. within that, you'll always find the gems. And so that's kind of what happens. And you just have to be willing to understand that, like, yeah, most of this stuff that you create, you have to get rid of. But you have to do it. You just have to keep creating. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. Put out as much product as you can. Another thing that I stopped doing that I have to start doing again, which is having the sort of confidence to take out my notebook and write stuff down the second I think of it. Like what if, if I'm in a conversation with people or whatever. Because I used to do that all the time and nobody yeah. nobody would call me out. But once you are a comic, especially if you're hanging out with other comics, if you mm. like take out your notebook, people are like, oh, would you, what are you writing down? <laughs> what, yeah. what did you think of a bit? You, like, were yeah, you, trying out, you trying out material on us? Yeah. So like, I actually, no, I that's why I like funny. using my phone now because then it just seems like I'm texting somebody. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'll just pull out my phone and just like write a bit in the phone. Yeah. yeah. And they'll be like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, just some girl. Just babes probably <laughs> so many babes texting me whatevs whatevs bros it's totally cool it, it, i noticed it's something that happens too where it's like you 
man, you got to write it down like the second you think you of it. You have to. Because you have to. That that old like yeah, you, oh, I'll remember it. You aren't going to. Yeah, it's yeah, done. I really it's that fucking done all the time. Yeah, you have to write it down. I always do that. I'd like every time, I'll, especially right right as you're falling asleep is usually when your brain uh, is becoming the most creative. And yeah. I think of like new edits, like ways to get into jokes better. And I'm like, oh, I got to remember that in the morning. And then I wake up in the morning and I'm like, you ever, you ever, I had a dream I ate spaghetti. Like that's <laughs> the whole. It's all I remember. You, you ever have like a dream where in the dream you say something? And, and your thought process is like, that would make a great fucking bit. And then, like, you wake up and you're like, okay, I got to write that down. And the second you turn over, you're like, fuck. Like, yeah, you completely I forgot what you Fucking writing jokes in your dreams, yeah. hey, in your sleep. I actually yeah. kind of had one of those one time, but it wasn't funny. Like, when you wake up, you're like, that was the dumbest thing ever. Why did I think it was funny? At oh, the yeah. Time? It's the same, like, with me if I try to write if I smoke pot. Like, I'll, I'll think of bits. Yeah. And then I'll go back when I'm sober and look at them and be like, what the fuck yeah, was what? that? Definitely, definitely. All I wrote was think about the guy who invented popcorn. That's not a bit. It's not a bit. I was talking with someone about getting... Sure, he was stoked. <laughs> getting one of the the marijuana cards in Vancouver. And they were like, how would you get it? And I was like, I've had two open heart surgeries. I just show up, look at the doctor, and lift up my shirt. Yeah. And he'll be like, yes, anxiety. Okay. So <laughs> you got open heart surgery? Yeah. Twice. Two of them. And I'm going to need another one fairly soon, too. Oh, my God. So yeah, I've got what hard, is uh, going on in there? His heart's too big. He's like the Grinch. Yeah. <laughs> too much love. <laughs> too much love in there. Three times too big. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I had a valve replacement in 2005. They put a porosine valve in me. Okay. And uh, they... They only last like eight to ten years. I'm coming up on year number ten. Oh no! In February. Why can't so, they put like a baboon wanna, valve? Don't you want to yeah, do upgrade that? the animal? It, it's too big. <laughs> and like, pigs are very close to humans. Yeah. In biology, I don't, I don't know why. Um, in hearts, for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. Dick Cheney had a pig heart or something like that. Because like a mouse. Did you know a mouse no, heart? Dick looks... Cheney eats pig hearts. That's why he's a lot, probably. <laughs> a mouse heart. It, it looks like a tornado. Like, it's just crazy. It's just like oh, a circle cool. of blood vessels that just, really? like, pushes the blood around in a circle. It's that pretty crazy. That's so cool. If you look up, like, a thermal image of a mouse heart. It looks... Because I was looking at it. Those, yeah. I was looking at it, and I thought it was, like, a nest. It looked like a nest. I was like, oh, yeah. this is the mouse's nest. And they're like, no, this is its heart. All right. That's a, that's that's, a mouse uh, heart. I don't know what you were looking up, but nothing showed up. Okay. <laughs> did you type thermal everything correctly? Image yes, you did. of... Maybe A. Put... Of, of mouse heart. Ah, oh, there it is. Put, 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 put quotations around mouse heart. No, no, just around... Okay. How to Google. Starring Chris Gaskin. Yeah, but if you if you put quotations, it'll look up that specifically, right? Like, is this the thing you're so, thinking of? That's a mouse my, for a computer inside a heart. Yeah. yeah uh, my is... my Google. pulmonic God valve... My pulmonic valve is a porcine valve. So, um, yeah, I... I had that surgery just after I turned 18. So I'm, yeah. Don't you want to do it a little earlier? If they said it lasts eight to 10 years, I'd probably got to change it six. Last time. Last <laughs> I'm not going to wear this thing out and then but, be like, yeah, it's fucking going down. But it's like going through heart surgery is hell. It's fucking, you aren't really? in the hospital that long. <laughs> like you aren't in the hospital that long. You're in the hospital like a week. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but you're still just like, ah, maybe I'll die. Maybe but, I'll die. Uh, yeah. well, They're the, still cutting the thing well, that you cut to kill somebody. <laughs> yes and no. That, I, I mean, that's Doctor not the part that concerns me. It, like, it was funny. The last time I, like, when I had my open heart surgery in 2005, like, I'm, I'm on the gurney waiting to go. And my mom goes, like, are you afraid? And I was like, nah, if they fuck up, they fuck up. Like, that's yeah. that's just how life is. Yeah, at least know? I get to die in a bed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> at least I'll die without waking up screaming. Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm going to die. Nah, that's it. I won't even know what happened. Like, that's the beauty of it. You got to be a real solid guy to so, be a surgeon, eh? Like, you can't be a fuck up. Like, you can't just go <laughs> get drunk and show up the next day like, oh, man, I'm so hungover. Okay, what do you need? What, what, yeah, what no do you way. Start grabbing your tools. You're I don't like, think oh. they do surgery like every day, though. Like, I think for them, like a surgery is like us doing the Tonight Show. It happens like once every. Some you know. of them do. Really? Some of them every that's, day. That's their job. Is they're day. surgeons. God damn. They're surgeons. <laughs> but like minor stuff. Like I think yeah. like oh, a yeah, heart yeah, yeah. surgery. Probably. That's yeah, probably like surgery. you build up to it for like a month. So yeah, like, you're fucking. Yeah, like, it's my ready. big day. <laughs> like, yeah, they're probably just lancing boils for the rest of them. 
The, um, the deal with open heart surgery, though, is they have to saw through your sternum and then crack open all your ribs. So it's like the recovery time. You're only in the hospital for like a week, but the recovery time's like four months. Yeah, because your bones because, have to heal. Yeah. Do they staple it? They put, you have like metal um, in your sternum? No. Like they, how do they get your sternum to fuse back together? To get, they just put the bones right back together. And they just, they just knit? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Weird. Um, neat. So it, it's like... It's like I, Wolverine. I literally <laughs> had three, three, four months where like it hurt to laugh. Yeah. Because all your ribs are broken. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know if you've cracked a rib. Can't they go up under? It's... <laughs> You think so? Will eh? you stop freaking me out, <laughs> fuckface? Jesus Christ. I don't I, know. I need another one of these, all right? Knock yeah, but, it off. But up, <laughs> up under sounds like a good solution rather than we're going to cut you open and spread you like a fucking... Oh, I, th- I thought you meant like the bones healing together, going like up and under. I was like, that no, sounds... No, he means like rather big. than crack you um, open and pull. No, like, I just think they, you they, end up looking like you were an alien. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like they, pull, You know what? They might be able to now. Ziploc bag. Yeah. Um, like this it's was like precision tools, robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like, like ten that. years ago when I had my last one, right? So because <laughs> now they do crazy shit. Yeah, like I've seen, I've seen stuff Denmark. where they do like uh, surgery on like stomach, but they go in like in your back. They yeah. just cut a little hole in your back and they send in like a tube that just has a ton of remote controls. Yeah. It's like a and then they like just put two of those in and then they play like it's PlayStation like a little mini Doctor Octopus. Yeah. And then yeah. sometimes <laughs> the guys in Denmark doing it. Yeah. yeah. And you're at home. Like, yeah. They're, they're using like an Xbox controller. Just. Yeah. It's like a kid doesn't even know he's actually <laughs> doing the surgery. It's like Ender's game. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, look, I fucked up. There's someone laying dead on a car hanging right out. That's it actually what they're doing, doing right now out. to map uh, brain, brain maps, like figuring out uh, nerve maps. There's a company that has released like a, it's basically like a video game where because people, humans are still way better at looking at patterns than computers. Yeah. So to try to get a computer to do it, to map the nerves in the human brain, would take so much longer. So they've just got like a collective of people who just try to find these nerve pathways in slices of the brain, like images. And then uh, basically people just pick what they think is the pathway, and then it compares it with what everybody else has, and it takes like the average, and that's probably correct. Yeah. And usually it is, and but the computer is like so far behind. <laughs> so they found out like the fastest way is to just like make it into a video game. And yeah. they're like, hey, you want to help science? They <laughs> and solve a puzzle. <laughs> they they had a theory. This is a theory that I heard. It they it was one of my social studies teachers had a theory that they they were doing like advanced surgeries and had like the brain mapped out. Uh, like before the Dark Ages happened. Because in the Dark Ages, they burned everything that had nothing to do with Christianity. Everything. Yeah. When they'd come across, they'd like... But that was just the Europeans, Dark Ages. Like that... Yeah. They still were still writing shit down in China. <laughs> they were nailing it over there. <laughs> That's a very good a point. <laughs> That's a good point. She was also not the smartest and a drunk, too. So... I talked about this on my podcast very recently about how much people attribute like all of our history in terms of like scientific discovery and stuff is just white people like it's like you know but he's like says da vinci's such a genius you know da vinci bought marco polo's notebooks yeah. of his exploration to china so all of his like architectural advances stuff like that like he just ripped it off from china he's like i discovered it because i'm white <laughs> i'll take credit here yeah classic white person maneuver but but it's like it is one of those theories that could hold at least a little bit of water. Sure. Because yeah, we don't know what like happened I said, in the Dark they, Ages. They burn every text that wasn't Christianity because it, it was basically in, in what countries though? It was like just in Rome and like almost all across Europe. Wasn't it like Islamic because, science was like way way far ahead? Yeah, and that's what got burnt up. Yeah, Islamic science. Like they all. There's also uh, a lot of indication that the Islamic People have discovered like all of the again like all like Galileo like all these like celestial bodies all that mm-hmm. stuff that was all being discovered around the same time by people in other countries too because like you know the they didn't have the internet so they couldn't pinpoint the moment that it was discovered but yeah. people were making like the same discoveries at around the same time but the people who get credit for it are just like whatever language you speak yeah well like <laughs> to be a really advanced society like stargazing was like yeah it was huge it was like 
being like an because that was it there was no lights at night like that starscape was just like a map that well you were, were thinking about something other than killing the people on the same ground as you like, yeah it was past it was a little bit civil to yeah. ask a question about the nether that you're looking out into yeah. yeah yeah totally like like but they figured a lot of shit out with no tool like next to no tool Br- brian's yeah. not here but i always talk to him about because he, really it's not he well he constantly watches like ancient aliens Mm-hmm. So he always goes off on like that fucking, but you know the ancient aliens, and I was like, "You're crazy, man." Yeah. And, and we were talking about. Yeah, there might have been. Yeah, oh, I'm not saying that isn't something that could not have happened, but I'm like, you know, the odds of it. Sure, it's all probability. That's the thing about science is it, and, you know it kind of deals in probabilities, but probabilities are wrong a lot of the time. We we really don't Just know. It's improbable doesn't we mean really it's don't know the human race. <laughs> Like before 600 AD. Yeah. We've got little pieces here and there, but we, we don't know. And one of the theories that I read, which I was like, this makes a lot of sense, was the way that they moved the bricks for the pyramids was on like a slab of clay. Is If you wet clay, yeah. they put clay on the bottom of the brick, wet the clay, and then you just fucking slide it like ice. Yeah. And you can move a 20-ton brick like it's... Yeah, you move it horizontally across the ground. How do you lift it? It's wet clay lifting it? That's a good point. <laughs> well, I thought it was manpower because they built right. Just had like a ton of slaves. Yeah. Chiseled them yeah. Off. So it does come down to manpower, but you did need a little something to slide with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, So it's a combination of both, I yeah. guess. I mean, it, it, again, then, it, it could have been done. It's it's just a matter of like... And then there, I saw like another video of this guy who made like a like a swivel... And was putting like this ten ton brick on one end, and then just popping it up, and then running around in a circle. And he moves this ten pound br- or this ten ton brick like fifty meters. Yeah. In, in about ten minutes. It's all about center of gravity. So it's same same way jujitsu works, right? Yeah. Like you just move somebody off their center, you can make the biggest fucking guy in the world fall over. Yeah. yeah. As long as you get that. Balance. Elon Gold's got a good bit on pyramids. It's pretty funny. Yeah. He talks about like just building it, and he's like, "You think the slaves?" He's like, "Here's how they could happen. They built the first row. They got to the end, and they're like, Jesus, fuck, man, we can't keep building like this. We're gonna fucking die out here.' Got an idea? It's like, let's build the next row a little smaller. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "We built that row. Do you think anyone noticed? No, no. They just right. Kept it's, getting uh, tinier and tinier. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Uh, well, there's also a theory out there that. All that stuff is way, way older than they think it is. Yeah. Yes. Like the Sphinx or whatever has water damage on it, like water erosion, unmistakable water erosion. Yeah. And there hasn't been water there for like 10,000 years or something. It's, like it's that. been longer than that. So it's like... Wasn't Napoleon the one that shot its nose off with yeah. a cannon? Well, his guys were <laughs> yeah. fucking around. They were constantly shooting at it. Yeah. That's how most of the damage uh, happened. So... Fucking Napoleon. One, one of the theories... Make a dang quesadilla. One, one of French. the theories that I <laughs> saw on that, and I, I was telling um, Brian, is they were they were talking about the, the Earth's procession into uh, specific constellations. Yeah. And how there's also like a giant procession as well that you call like, a, like the Golden Age, the Dark Age. Yeah. And it's like each and every one of these processions is roughly about 2,150 years. Yeah. Is they found out. So we're so talking like, X-Men? Is that what we're talking about? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like right now, right now we're in the age of Pisces. Yeah. And the next stage is Aquarius. The dawning of so, the age of Aquarius. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and... And it's like, if you go back, it was uh, Taurus before then, and then Leo, which is when they assumed they'd make something like the Sphinx. Yeah. Was during the time of Leo, you'd make a cat. It would make the most sense. With a human face. Yes. But I want a human face on a scorpion I, body. That'd be fucking dope. Where's the scorpion Sphinx? <laughs> Egyptians were all about cats, though. I, that like, that's how they got down. Because tr- it was all the Leo. I've been I've been trying to play uh, Spelunky, fuck scorpions. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, they the theory was the last time Le- like we were in Leo, so what's going on? It, it was in a dark age. So they were like, why would you make it during the dark age? You'd want to make it during a golden age. So the the theory is is like more than twenty five thousand years old. 
instead of the original theory of it's 6,000 years old. Yeah. But it's super weird how, like, the evidence is there for the water erosion. What you're saying is the theory? Yeah. So is this, but it has this, this but, concrete evidence that comes with it. And people don't want to acknowledge it. Yeah. The, like, he had to go, like, Graham, Honco- or Graham Hancock and... Uh, well, it also comes into, like, religious stuff, too, where they're like, the earth is only 6,000 years old. There's it's... that, but then these... Um, Graham Hancock got blackmailed by, like, the BBC and at, at the request of, like, a, the big major universities in Britain. Wow. Because he was upending everything that's yeah. being taught in this field. It's yeah. all wrong, is what you're telling us. Our programs were shit. Yeah. And we're, we're, we don't... We haven't gotten to the bottom of this at all. Yeah. Well, and they, they... The theory also is the Sphinx and the Three Kings were built on a riverbed. And the Nile River hasn't been out that far in, like, 20,000 years. Because they, they think it was like a giant marketplace. And yet it moves. <laughs> well, that's the river, <laughs> not. That's what Galileo said when they dragged him away. <laughs> they were like, you can't. It's like, you can't tell us that the, that the earth is moving around the sun. And then he's like, and yet it moves. You can tell me I'm wrong. It's still going to be moving. Yeah. That's what happens. That is good. They had a little disagreement there. Galileo and the Pope. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Classic little, Pope maneuver. Couldn't get eye to eye on that. <laughs> Do you remember when the Pope said uh, dick? He said like penis in one of his speeches? <laughs> Most recently? Like, yeah. Because yeah. cazzo is like the Italian word for penis. Yeah. And you call somebody that all the time. Like fazia da cazzo is like dick face. Or like stu cazzo means dick sucker. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the Pope doesn't actually speak Italian He's because uh, he's from South America. Mm-hmm. So uh, they had like a translator and they wrote uh, <laughs> Cauzo, which just means like thing. Yeah. But he pronounced it Cazzo. Oh, no. Uh, the Pope said dick in one of his speeches. Pretty great. <laughs> I, you know what? Isn't it weird how I he's like doing, they have Pope. like a... He's great. I know, but they run it like a business now, like a PR firm. Totally. Like how of they course. have to deflect. That's how they've been running it. For I know, but fucking... he's like sending... A party, years. like a platform, like they're just changing. That he's like, okay, well, we'll just embrace science a little bit now, and he's not. Yeah. Like they don't even really subscribe to the creationist. Uh, dig up Galileo. Tell him we're sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you think of gay people? They should be married. I don't understand the big problem with it. Yeah. The thing is, they're just trying to exploit the ambiguity in their book. They don't. He's well, that's, just like, nah, it doesn't really mean that. It means that, and then it goes off interpretation. And well, there's they a lot seem of to be able to spin it wherever they want to. Cool shit, because like uh, the Bible's so it's been translated so many times, yeah. And so taking it at face value is obviously ridiculous. Which is like, you know, there's people in the southern states that are like, nope, what it says is what it is, and it's like, well, okay, that's mm-hmm. these are still stories meant to inspire some sort of progressive thought. And yeah. the, the, <laughs> I mean, the timing of the New Testament is at, at about 600 A.D. as well when they found out like the first actual writing by going back through these translations well that's what happened with the quran too it was told and then not written down for like yeah. hundreds of years yeah they were just stories but the other thing that's crazy you ever is play like, a game of fucking when it's written yeah it's a bad telephone? game of telephone yeah. yeah it's when it's written it's like uh the hebrew language that was originally written in is also they don't have numbers like they use letters as numbers so every letter also has a numerical value so there was mm-hmm. also a lot of math and science involved that they just sort of ignored like they were just like oh the words are important but then they kind of left the numbers because mm-hmm. like you know there's a lot of stuff to do with like you know uh eve is adam's third rib which is like earth is the third body from the sun like all that kind of stuff yeah. is in there but yeah. it gets ignored it's there's, it just goes so much deeper than what has originally been you know taught and again, like, again, there's so many interpretations. Like, you know, the the, the amount of kings that just changed shit because they're like, but I want to have this be yeah. allowed. Yeah. But I really like meat on Fridays. <laughs> and I mean, like, you I'm know. the fucking king, damn it. Change it. <laughs> or I'm knocking your church down and burning your family. Like, okay, okay, okay. It, it's, the fish thing is just kind of a guideline. <laughs> it, it's also funny when you talk about, like, other, rela- or other religions and their... They're divine beings, and you start bringing up, like, like you know, the the sun god Horus in Egyptian, and you're like, you know, he was died for three days. Yeah, died for three days. Born on the twenty fifth, and yeah. you just watch Christians like, oh, that was that was Satan's work, and you go, no, it's a it's a rip off, you it's idiots. The same thing. It's the same thing. You scooped. Well, it. yeah, you, well, you have <laughs> from some the people stars who think that we walked with dinosaurs, and then there's some people that we are, lost the dinosaurs in the flood. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, so, and then there's some people that are just trying to. They get refused keep it alive. to get on the boat. The ark was too big or it was too small, man. It was only forty cubits. <laughs> <laughs> only forty cubits in length. Have you seen Have you seen Rogan's bit about the ark? No. It's It's one of the most brilliant fucking bits. Doesn't he just talk like a retard the whole time? Well, it's it's him breaking down. If you were to tell that story, because he goes that story's so crazy. If you told that to a fucking retarded kid, he'd have a lot of questions. <laughs> It, it's it's really a brilliant breakdown. Where did all the water come from? Of that it was in the firmament. There was a firmament. Don't, don't animals eat other animals? What did they eat if they were on this boat? And he starts out the story like... Did you guys hear about that? Okay, so this is crazy. This has to do with animals eating other animals. There was a giraffe at the I forget, San Diego Zoo, I think, that was okay. like, they realized the giraffe couldn't breed. And they just killed it and fed it to the lions. Like, no public- way. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. They were just like, fuck yes. They're like, we're just going to kill it and we're going to oh, cut it up and awesome. we're going to give it to our lions. And like so the public like, was like, no, no, that's no so don't great. do that. And that's they were so like, fucking I don't know, why not? That's what yeah. they eat. They diced it up like yeah. for them. Like, yeah, they butchered it. They're going to use it as food. They butchered oh, it and they cope. gave it to the oh, lions. I wish okay. they didn't butcher it. I wish they just put it in the fucking cage. It was in, it was in Copenhagen. Kids. Yeah. There it is there. Hey kids, oh, why they, like they didn't they like prep it. They just kind of hacked it. In <laughs> yeah, they just hacked it up. They didn't like in you know front, saute it. Ah, uh, nah, man. Yeah, fuck that shit. You gotta you gotta you put it. Want... Well, no, because they the also cage. need to make it last. They can't just like give it all to the lions because then they'll eat the whole thing and then they won't you know. They yeah, won't but then run they won't. Out of food. Yeah. You still have more food for them, dude. Nah. That's you gotta you gotta dude, you have to cool. have kids watch nature take its course. You know, because that's that's the last. Every time I hear about some guy who's like, I got a pet lion, it's like, that thing's going to fucking kill you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at him. There he goes. And then it's, you know, fucking. Yeah, it's the poking. There's a bunch of kids around. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they showed the feeding to kids, but it's like, I would have just put the giraffe in there and watched the giraffe look around like, oh, fuck. Yeah, but then they're, they, like I said, they're going to binge eat uh, it. They're yeah. going to all eat it. Yeah, yeah that's it. They got to portion it out. And you are trying to oh, yeah. spare the, that's a lot the of giraffe meat, the terror, know? I guess. That looks delicious. Oh, man. Yeah, I wonder what giraffe meat tastes Those like. are meaty, eh? Yeah, he's got a lot of meat on him. I bet you I bet out. you, somebody that worked at that zoo got to eat some of it. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, I got to try some. I can't just, just give it to the lions. Is there exotic it's probably gamey. Like I bet it tastes like venison. Straight up illegal. Yeah, probably. Gamey. Tiger meat. I like venison. Tiger meat's Venison's illegal. pretty good. Tiger meat's totally illegal, but it's super expensive. Right. <laughs> that makes sense. Because it's illegal. Says <laughs> the guy who's had a taste of tiger meat. Yeah, I wish. Uh, How yeah, come? Is it because they're endangered somehow? Or like they're too the close The stripe to... parts taste the best. Uh, they have like crazy like... I Frosted don't know. flakes is as close as I've got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tigers yeah, just have like... Great. They have crazy adrenal glands, like their fucking hormones are like, like there's a story of a guy that I read who got attacked by a male tiger who was trying to find a mate. So the male tiger just had like a fuck ton of yeah. testosterone like coursing through its veins. Uh, it came upon him and attacked him. It like kind of chewed up his leg and then some people came and like chased it off and he recovered and his knee was like totally torn up. But he said once he recovered, uh, He's this guy's like I think mid forties. He was a man at the time, and once the time he rec- like once he recovered, he's like I could not stop fucking women. Like I was so horny the whole time. Like it was crazy. Yeah. He's like I don't know where this like through his energy. saliva. Yeah, through yeah. the tiger's saliva. Like just somehow Jeez. the testosterone yeah. seeped into his blood, and he's like I have to fuck all the time. Like he just said his dick was just hard constantly that's awesome. from being involved with this tiger. And so that's why like you'd think they would find a on way the to black market. That. So yeah. it's illegal it, because of a black market thing that's come up around it like that. Yeah. And, and they like start poaching. Tigers. So that's what it is. They poach tigers right. for their furs, for their meat, for their, like if you actually eat their dick, apparently it makes you like <laughs> super hard for a long time. They also do a thing called tiger wine where they'll pickle an entire tiger in an alcoholic fluid and then drink yeah. that. Like with the tiger like oh, okay, right, skeleton right, right. in there, yeah, yeah. just to Mate? get like the last amounts right. of whatever that essence is out of the bones. I got it. It's like the same within uh, soup, like a pea soup or a in Japan soup. where they have snake drink. Have you guys ever had that? No. Snake maybe, whiskey. Maybe it. Maybe it was that, or maybe that guy realized he almost died and didn't fucking off pussy in his life yet. Yeah, but and was still, just like, like <laughs> I gotta fuck more pussy. <laughs> the, way, it's working for you. The adrenaline. Yeah, whatever. Those it is. Eastern Asian countries though, they do too much stuff with shit for me. Like, you just had snake wine, and I'm assuming there might be feces in it because they have so many of those goddamn rituals. Yeah, maybe. I can't Where eat they anything. Use like, look shit. at that. There's lion on a plate. Like, there's rat they, feces like, in everything. Drink baby shit, though. That's that's lion meat on yeah. a plate? 
Yeah. I don't know. It just looks... Uh, it's probably goat. <laughs> you know what? It looks like any Chinese food meat. I don't get where Chinese food places <laughs> get their meat, but it's not the same place I get my meat because their beef is like always fucked and like... It's probably pork, the way that they it? treat it. Like they... Uh, I feel like they spice just... Spice it and stuff. Well, yeah, the way it's marinated. It, it's always <laughs> fucking weird. Like it's Damon never Shredder a good cut bit. of meat. Oh, yeah. Homeless Cats Association Homeless cats of, Richmond. of Richmond. Seven exotic meats. But I guess it's eating. just from... So, so like, whale, beer, apparently right? whale is uh, is super good and also tastes right. very similar to human, according to people who eat whale. Which is why it's super <laughs> and good. And human, I guess. And, uh, right? Yeah. Why it's super good. Yeah. Yeah. Whale meat. Ostrich. You got to get some ostrich in you. You ever had... Uh, I've had rabbit meat. Rabbit meat's pretty good. I like duck. Duck is really good. It's like a combination of yeah, chicken yeah. and steak. Yeah. yeah, I've heard duck's yeah. good. I can't. I can't seem to bring myself to do it. What's foie gras? I want to try it. Foie gras is a goose liver. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which it's, is the same as like pate, like liver pate. Right. It's it's okay. Awesome. It's I, it's I don't awesome. want to say it's awesome. It's, I love it. I don't, so I don't like liver pate. So but foie gras is okay. I bet you giraffes taste gamey. That's probably. probably. Is it legal anywhere to just eat other humans? No. 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 Nowhere. 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 It's also not maybe, good to eat maybe. human. It's bad for your body. Oh yeah, yeah. it's because the terrible. amino acids like yeah. well, that's what mad cow disease is. Yeah, is if like an organism's not built to be able to absorb itself. Okay, like that. Some of them, mostly mammals, because there's like a lot really? of cannibalism in like yeah. reptilian societies. Okay. And that makes sense. There's like sharks and stuff. But and don't like, like other bears eat other bears? I yeah, think that, like the grizzlies will kill the like baby black. But bears. It's not I think often. they just kill it to make sure the mother's not once, nursing anymore, so she'll be able to be impregnated again. They don't kill them to eat them. Right. But what like about, reptiles, a lot of reptiles. Dogs do the same thing. Dogs do the exact same thing. That's why they'll kill puppies. But there are cannibals who don't. They don't die right away. It's no, just, it's it just fucks with you. Like, yeah, you oh, yeah, turn yeah. your brain. You like, get like super, Parkinson's disease. Yeah. And stuff. Oh, get, really? yeah. yeah, yeah. You get the shakes. So like a bear yeah, would do it in a pinch because uh, he needs to eat more than he needs anything else. Yeah, but he doesn't understand long term health benefits. Book of yeah. Eli, I remember right. now. Yeah, remember Book of Eli, yeah, and then they go there, and the then the lady starts shaking, and they're like, "Oh fuck, we're getting out of here." Yeah, we're gonna. It's go. yeah. a good movie. Yeah, man, I really like that movie. The uh, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, reptiles uh, and bugs eat their own exoskeletons or skin like when they shed like geckos mm-hmm. when geckos okay, they'll shed, shed and they then eat they eat it yeah and it's they weird get, that snakes they get some kind of nutritional value out of it yeah they get calcium so that's it's full of calcium same like when bugs are born the first thing they do is eat their shell of their egg because it has yeah. a shit ton of calcium well oh, sometimes uh there's like there's hornets that'll kill a, a spider and then yeah. just to birth their babies in there so that's yeah. what they eat as they come out yeah eat the dead spider that's it's wild. It's cool. I, I love watching like those videos on YouTube. They're I love awesome. watching cheetahs take things down. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever they there's like that one video, cheetah overdrive. Cheetah so, tackling oh, a gazelle. It's fucking great. I always hate those shows where the the like some National Geographic and then it'll be showing the cheetah and they'll be talking about the cheetah. The Here's cheetahs, the cheetah rapid the cheetah's overdrive. Hungry and then it ends. With the gazelle getting away? I'm like, no, show the cheetah fucking killing the gazelle. I don't want to see the gazelle get away. Well, some people do. But they build this <laughs> up like it's what is a this music? Music? Yeah, they're pussies. I don't know. It's like... It's like an anime? Stealth mode. <laughs> like, it's fucking... This video's hilarious. It sounds like, like music... Menu music from an old video game. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. And it just gets cooking. And it looks cool when they start going they like, side They speed it up, side, though. And their tails... Do yeah. you think that's sped up? That, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, absolutely the video's yeah. sped up there. They're fast. <laughs> dude, to do just off and along. And this guy's just coming to fuck your day. Pretty sweet guitar solo, bro. Oh, yeah. This absolutely sounds like something... I like this one. You can see like his tail, like Mega Man, as he moves. Yeah, like as he goes side to side here, he swings his tail. That's why their tail's longer than other cats. To be rapidly cool. To balance better. Some of those cats are crazy. Like the ones that don't have the speed. That was your cheetah overdrive of the week, folks. Possess like crazy strength. Like jaguars would just drag everything up in a tree to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? And they're like, yeah, I just grab it with my face and I climb up the tree. Yeah, you gotta have strong uh, back of the head. You gotta be really like. Crazy. Imagine if you had to attack everything with your face. Did you see that video of that guy getting killed? Well, they by also the have a handful of steak knives. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> but and that's most why. Most of the time, every... like when tigers kill things, uh, it's like 
they don't even have their claws out. It's just the force they can hit with. Right, yeah. just like a fucking you. wrecking ball. Like, yeah. They'll just destroy you. <laughs> like, most people that like die from tiger attacks. They their tongues are like rough sandpaper. They could literally take your skin off with their tongue. Right. Like, yeah. they're, they're crazy animals. Most of the time, they just do, like, the shake shake to death when, like, people have died yep. from tiger right. attacks. They'll just, like, grab their backpack and, like, just, yeah. them, just break Fuck all it. their bones. Yeah. That's crazy. Which is fucking baffling that people think they can domesticate that. Like, they can. They've, I think they've successfully domesticated a lot of animals. Well, there's that, that guy, that lion guy on around. that GoPro thing. Yeah, yeah there's a couple of them. There's people that hang out in packs of cheetahs. Like, just... There's guys like, who... You see that full lion coming through, like, the grass at them, and you're like, oh, this isn't going to be fucking good. And then it jumps and it up and it gives them a hug, and you're like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah. And you're like, you're still dumb. But there's, there's yeah, <laughs> like, there's, you can't do that. There's people who like domesticate. Congratulations, coyotes. you ruined a tiger. <laughs> yeah. He there's, is now a huge bitch. There are there are people who domesticate coyotes, and it's like the second they're sick, they have to be away from that coyote because that coyote will attack them when they're sick. Coyotes yeah, are never buddies, domesticated; they're just cunts. My buddies yeah. will they will long game you. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. they're cunning fucking animals. They're like. There's videos of of uh of them like limping by cars and shit just so they aren't being rung off. So people are like, "Oh, he's limping. Let him by." Yeah. That's like or, if you go dog sledding, they don't let kids come dog sledding because if a kid like falls down and starts crying, the dog will eat the kid. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The dog's dead weight. <laughs> yeah, cuz yeah. the dogs are like, "Fuck this thing. I'm not hauling this thing around." <laughs> not hauling around this little bitch. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's, that uh, is the well, ultimate uh, question, though. Like, how crazy cheetahs are with their face. Like, to fight a gorilla, you're like, who wins? I always the cat want to style take the or gorilla because he just seems so fucking strong. Yeah, gorilla. But I feel that the lion, like the claws, I think are the. It's the pretty much like nah, gorilla claws. skin is so thick, though. Yeah. 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 I don't know if like yeah, it's a, like if five a large leather cat couches would have to grab the throat, right? It'd have to end up getting the throat. Like yeah, back of the neck. They always yeah. bite the back of the neck. Yeah, they'll bite crunch, the back like, where the spine connects with the skull. They'll right. sever that usually first. But yeah, I don't know why. Like, well, you I know, don't know. Like, depends on the weight. Depends on who strikes first. I picture yeah. the lion jumping and then the gorilla just like grabbing him and being like, "Hey, listen." <laughs> You just throw what an you uppercut. Do it. Sure, yeah. you can. Well, yeah, I always want to see it. that King tiger Kong. uppercut. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> like Throwing in that, like a tiger knee. Adam. Yeah, in the Kong movie with Jack Black, he randomly there's dinosaurs on the island for yeah. whatever reason. He fights yeah, a couple of fight them, him. but he does that thing where he just pulls their jaws apart, and you're like, yeah, that's what would happen. That's yeah, what, that's what a gorilla would do to any cat. Just yeah. Know to pull its jaws apart. That yeah. makes sense. Or like, just, how do you get there? You got to take the back. They just do the like <laughs> pile on bash down, like just like hit, yeah. hammer fist. Well, that's the thing. They might get a knockout before they get anything. That movie was so fucking bad. The King Kong movie? Yeah. I thought it was all right. It was atrocious. I didn't, I didn't that that it. CGI seeing of them running from the fucking... The dinosaurs? Ugh. It's brutal. Is it bad CGI? It's it's terrible. It's yeah, like I, I saw a lot of those CGI God movies awful. before I got glasses. You know what it is though? So it's like the I God... like, couldn't see the edges, so it was actually kind of it's it was like, fine. It was it's like, like blurry. It's like the god awful fucking green screen shit too. Like it looks, it's almost as bad as like the fucking early Harry Potter movies. No, with the Quidditch. that's that's pretty bad. I bought the I, Harry I, Potter I, box set on Blu-ray. Say, I went uh, back and watched like the first three and they're just like the CGI. I'm like, this is the worst. How is the, this even like, don't yeah. buy it, but don't buy a movie made before 2010 on the Blu-ray. first yeah. Spider-Man, <laughs> the first Spider-Man movie when he's up under like Norman, Os- like the, the drop of blood happens. Yeah. Norman Osborn turns and then he's under the balcony. Yeah. You could see the draw lines yeah. around him. As he's there, oh, it's yeah. hilarious. Nice, but it's like it's it's almost as bad as that fucking Bond film when he's like, which one? Surfing the ice. Oh yeah, tomorrow got... never dies. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 like that. The green screen on that. I know. Is I, horrendous. I remember and the that. CGI. Yeah, when he has whatever happened to horrendous. Jackie Chan? Do your own stunts, you losers. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's, that's you know what? That's why I like someone like Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise does the majority of his own stunts. He's <laughs> fucking he's a maniac. Yeah. Yeah, he's a maniac. He's crazy. He's crazy. I I respect that in an actor. Someone who's like, I'll I'll climb the fucking yeah. rocks. And they're this like, dude, is, you know uh, I'll jump this on a motorbike. Yeah. Oh, hang on. He yeah. takes it seriously. He's also a dope dude, apparently. Uh Who? A, a Tom Cruise. Tom Sorry, Cruise. I wasn't paying attention. There's a story of him working on a movie with somebody and the guy was like, uh, talking about this 
he's like Tom Cruise is a big motorcycle fan, and the yeah. guy was talking about this bike that he had that he that he dumped. He like wrecked it, and he like basically told him like, yeah, it was one of a kind. It's from Germany. It was like custom built. And then sure enough, like you know, a couple weeks later, the fucking bike shows up at the guy's house with a note from Tom Cruise being like. Yeah, you enjoy your new bike. Yeah. A note that says, I have God money. Yeah. <laughs> so God this money. really wasn't me going out of my way. I'm, I'm the right CGI. hand yeah, man. I made one phone call to make this yeah. happen. <laughs> this Just is the so one with know. the invisible car, right? And this yeah, guy's an Asian is. dude? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. What? But here's where they start a tsunami, right? By breaking this ice. and. Oh, Pierce. Yeah, but he does what this. What are you going to do now? Like this, oh, yeah. this CGI. Put, puts the fucking yeah. uh, cool in the, the face lid. of danger. He's putting the fucking lid from the uh, from the boat, the speedboat. It's like one of those giant speedboat things. Speedboat on his feet, and he's gonna use it so he could surf it. Here he comes. <laughs> it's a terrible thing. Is that Reese Iphens? <laughs> okay, hold on. There, look at look at how bad the fucking green screen is. <laughs> this is so pixelated that it doesn't look yeah, as bad as it too. should. Yeah. Yeah, that's awful. Ugh. This movie was terrible. Oh, it was great. This is something my Dude, dad would like. I love I've it. Never, was great. I've I know never most Bond like movies are terrible. That Invisible I love Car. Point. Movie. That's not true at all. Skyfall was fucking great. Fuck these new Bond movies. Casino you know Royale what? was they're just, fucking great. They're just born identity. Bond is not a guy who punches people. He has gadgets. <laughs> He's gadgets. Gadget yeah, Bond. True. If I wanted to watch a guy who's just like a shitty... Guy who fucks up and gets caught and then punches his way out of danger. I'll watch a Schwarzenegger movie. Like, he doesn't... He never has the edge. He's supposed to have the technological advantage because he's got Q Branch. But he never has any gadgets. It's like... Like, the whole thing with the click pen bomb and Goldeneye? Tell me that wasn't dope. <laughs> so, so it, it wasn't, wasn't dope. dope. It was fucking stupid. It was great. Uh, My favorite thing... Yeah, yeah, you want to watch a guy uh, tied to a chair get his balls hit with a knotted rope? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What a great movie. (laughs) I love the... uh, First of all, that movie's fucking fantastic, all right? Also, also, the only good thing about Goldeneye was the video game. That movie was fucking brutal. Goldeneye was sweet, man. Boris was doing that hacking thing, and I thought, like... That was the first time I ever watched a movie where I played the video game. Oh, send a spike. He was such a great 90s hacker, too. He had, like, the Hawaiian shirt. That's true. Everything about it was, like, so stereotypical. Never showers. Yeah. Tiny, stupid glasses. No, I'm a computer hacker. Yeah. (laughs) I loved it how much like hacking was like a big thing in Dude, like the I, late nineties. Yeah, man. I, I, I can't. I was every movie the, had like a secret hacker, like Password Swordfish. Remember that stupid movie? Yeah. Ah. Well, it made oh, everything yeah, possible right, if you right. wrote it. Yeah, into but Halle, script, Halle right? Berry's yeah. somebody who can just circumvent all the technology. If yeah. Halle Berry's tits. Yeah, yeah. I was in, that's what I was, was in, in that movie. Swordfish. Gonna hack yeah, it. Was... Uh, what was that horrible shit movie, movie Travolta did that, that was, was like a Scientology fish. movie? Oh, oh. Uh, Battlefield Earth. Yeah, that's the one. I saw that in theaters. I was very confused about what was Oof. happening. There's nothing. See, there's no resolve to you... that. I, no, yeah, granted, it, never, it didn't no. even really end. No. It was just kind of like, Have any I haven't seen that. Leverage a human? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? I haven't seen that since I was like 12, but I enjoyed it. I remember liking <laughs> it. I... I have to. I'm sure if I see it again, I'll be like, "The fuck." Yeah, if you go back and watch it, you're like, "Oh, this is really bad." Have you seen? It comes up as like Jake Gyllenhaal. The enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal. No, you gotta like check. Don't actually watch it. But it's uh, it's like the worst (laughs) fucking movie in the world, man. Like it's literally that's like a pretty a, bold claim. Because there's a lot of awful I, movies. Well, it got like such a high Rotten Tomatoes score that I was like, "Oh, it's got to be good." But I find that Rotten Tomatoes things all backwards. But Sometimes. You get to the end of that movie, and I literally cannot tell you one thing that movie's about. Like, nothing. Well, that was with, like me with The Grey, that Liam Neeson movie. Like, I watched that, and I was like, wolves. this movie's the worst. <laughs> there was wolves. Because it's so bad. Like, it's about a guy who doesn't know what the fuck to do in a disaster. Like, yeah. when, you, when you crash a plane, you're supposed to stay with the plane crash, but instead, he's like, don't worry, we'll all go into the forest and seek shelter. If you do that, everyone's going to die. And guess what happened? Everybody <laughs> <Everyone> dies. <laughs> He's just like a story of like the shittiest I like guy the, in a disaster. I uh, like the shotgun shells on the end of the stick for poking them. Oh, that was so stupid. Um, yeah. um, I, we I, should probably wrap this thing up, eh? I, I was going to say, I, I can't yeah. wait for that Black Hat movie that's coming out next weekend. Black Hat? It's, uh, it's a new Michael Mann film, and it's about hackers. Ooh. Okay. It, it's got that uh, fucking dude who played Thor. Okay. 
Uh, Kim Jong Il. Oh, yeah, about I saw it? that. Kim Jong Un. <laughs> you know I, I don't. Maybe. Chris oh no, Kim Jong Il's dead. Kim Jong Un yeah. is the one mm. who might be upset about it. Yeah, yeah Ki- Kim Jong Il is don't the guy know. who's like, you made fun of me in a movie. That's awesome. That was. That apparently, like, he loved uh, Team America. Kim Jong Il. Really? And they lampooned the shit out of him in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. The guy can appreciate satire. Kim Jong Un's <laughs> just like a big baby. Yeah. Um. Ooh. So. This is where we get good, we get our uh, websites hacked. Yeah. Okay. No, it was good. Uh, good having you on the show. Thanks for coming out. Hey, no problem. It was awesome having you here. Uh, sure. Whenever you're back in town, love to have you again. Absolutely. Maybe we'll Skype you in sometime. Sure. You know. Um. Do you have, have anything coming up? What's coming up? Uh, when you pay comedy fast. Yeah. It's, uh, CBC. Sunday night. Sunday night at nine on CBC. This is this is Friday, so it's two days from now, uh, January eleventh, yep. nine p.m. on uh, CBC in Canada. We'll be on CBC.ca after that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think both of you are on there. No, I'm not. Oh, oh, okay. (laughs) Um, So you're gonna be? You have a what's that? Okay, it's a taped uh, sort of ten minute set that I did for the Winnipeg Comedy Festival. That I'll add it down to three. Yeah, and it's gonna be on (laughs) CBC. That's super sweet, man. And then uh, what? Probably got an album coming out at some time this year. I have a podcast. It's called Science Us. If you want to check that out, Uh, it's on iTunes and or like find uh twitter at science us pod yep. you have a website at all ivandecker.com nice and are you getting a taping album stuff i'm gonna do another album i think this year i have an album already out on itunes yeah uh, what's it called it's called we're learning oh, okay and uh i didn't release it so the quality is eh, it's pretty good i don't know yeah. i don't really care if you buy it though because i don't get any of the money from it like oh I've, really because <laughs> somebody else uh, released it see on my i behalf. do buy mine okay. Because I get I get money for it. Okay, Chris, what do you got I'm coming iTunes. up? Um, I've I've got this show. Can go see Black Hat uh, this week. <laughs> see Black Hat. Uh, Catch him in theaters. I'll, I'll be I'll be performing on the the eighth anniversary show of uh, King of Cafe on the twentieth. Okay. Oh yeah, I'll be there too. So yeah, there you go. You're in Vancouver. And um, then, uh, I think I got nothing. <laughs> I uh, I'll be at work Monday, folks. Monday. Uh, nice. Back to my fucking great life. Stay here. What do you got coming up? <laughs> He's got Nothing. work tonight. Uh, I'm going to work right now. Fucking joke. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks for listening, you guys. Again, thanks for uh, coming on the show. And uh, no yeah. problem. My pleasure. Thanks for yeah. having me. Thanks for letting me fill in for Brian. Yeah. You say Is that what you're doing? 